at the stage. There we go. I was like, what happened, man? I'm not on. She's I'm, I'm still learning StreamYard, y'all. Still learning. But, hey, we in the building right now. I just got through taking me a good nap. I'm all rested up. We got the 50 Cent concert coming up tonight. So I'm going to end up driving that. Like I said, it's only 6.30 right now. So I still got about, what, two hours, two and a half hours before I got to go in there, start getting the car ready, get out on the road and everything. But, it, like I said, I haven't been online since, what, late February. What up, NGB? My brother up in Seattle. Yeah, I haven't been online since, what, late February. So now I'm just like, you know, I'm getting back into my March swing of everything back in. You know, I'm off of youtooth.com. Got my tooth fixed, motherfucker. <laughs> what up, Aaron? What's good, brother? Can y'all hear me okay? Is it good? Is it crackling? Is it a straight sound? Because y'all know me. I don't want to keep this live stream going if this thing is crackling. I'll start it back over again. Be like, let's try this again. But yeah, Bubba Sue, I'm back, back in action. Okay, cool, cool. Loud and clear. Thank you, brother. Appreciate that. What up, Justin? What's up? Yeah, man. Like I said, it, it was a it was a crazy February. You know what I'm saying? I, we had a crazy February as far as in Phoenix because we had the Phoenix open, the waste management open. We had, you know, Super Bowl was going. We had a lot of driving to do. And y'all know YouTube don't pay a lot anyways. So I had to get out and make money. That's why February looked so good at the end of the month, man. We really got out there and we hit it hard. January was slow. I was actually, you know, my bank account went down 800. But once February hit, we all got out there and we like banged out that hard week. You know, we had Juan Vargas. He made 4,000. Uh, what? Uh, Nick, he went out, made about 3,700. I cleared about 2,600 all within a few days. We was all just like hitting it, hitting it hard in February. And that's why I say, if, if we're going to be out there driving, let's go out there and make this money the right way. Let's do our cash rides. If we have to convert them, let's, you know, only take smart rides with high profits. If we got to do it like that, no matter what, we got to leave with these profits. We got to leave with this money. And so that's what I did with the end of February, since I knew my tooth was kind of hurting a little bit and I didn't want to get on live streams. I just said, let's drive. Let's go out there and just make a whole lot of money. So I just went out there and just drove. That was it. I didn't do a lot of recordings because y'all know I'm, I'm doing conversions left and right. And I say, if you're out there converting, you ain't got to record yourself converting people. Go out there and make your money. Do it the right way. You know how you got to do this. So, yeah, what up? What up, Knife Juggler? Just, I need to share Jeff. I was supporting in Seattle. All right, brother. That's what's up. That Hey, hold up. I think I, I put a link at the very top. I know I got a link in the description. I'm going to put this link right here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can put this up top. I don't know how to do this stuff, man. I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. <laughs> but that was my link right there. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, I'm back in, Dems. I'm back in. But I, I'm letting people know, you know, if we got to go out there, the protest is happening on April the 1st. We need to make our profits before April the 1st because y'all know me. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to go out there, educate drivers, educate riders. And I, I saw a professor. He, okay, cool, cool. It's Penn. All right, bet, bet. Yeah, I'm back, Dems. I'm back. And the professor just dropped the video, you know, talking about delivery, how delivery is overpriced and everything. And it's funny because I did that video about uh, what Tony delivers up in Seattle. And how he's starting to do his own delivery services. A lot of people are getting tired of these apps, man. They're getting tired of them. These apps are overcharging people. I mean, dude says something like a $16, $17 sandwich ended up costing him like 40 bucks going through the app. Guaranteed the driver didn't get number probably six bucks out of that deal. It's, it's too many people eating off the backs of drivers right now. And if we don't stand for ourselves and say, hey, if we're out there doing the work, we deserve to share in those profits. Everybody's bank account should be looking nice. If you're an entrepreneur, you're a contractor, your bank account should be looking nice at the end of the month, especially if you out there putting up all that money. Your bank account should be OK. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I got it. I got it. Triple A Z. Hey, did you get your shirt yet? Because I sent your shirt out the other day, brother. I sent your shirt out. I don't know if you got it yet. Because everybody knows in my membership group, you know, a few of us, we get this shirt for free. You know, and I, I made a couple of them for people who actually said, hey, man, I'm going to go through and buy one. So they went out. Oh, cool, cool. You got it. There you go, brother. Like I said, I when I get the orders in, especially for my membership group for the Vibranium level, every month you guys get a free shirt every month. So like I said, don't go to the website and buy it. If you see a shirt you like, even on the website, hit me up, man. Be like, hey, man. Oh, you said you got it on now? There you go. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. He says, I got, hey, same. I'm wearing this one tonight. When I'm out driving tonight, I'm wearing this one. Nice boys win. What's good? So I tell you, man, if you're in a vibranium group, you get a free shirt every month. Don't and there's no YouTubers out there giving out free gear like that. You know what I'm saying? You join my group, 
I go get the inventory, whatever design you want on the website. I drop the design on it. I get it in the mail for you. I take time out making it, creating it, getting it set up right. Get your name on the back. Like mine got my name too. So all of us with this shirt all got our names on the back. So when you see us around town cruising, you see us walking up in Circle K or something like that. Anybody in the in the group that's got this shirt on, it's got their name on the back. You know where they got it from. So, hey, you, you the 300. We know who you are. You rolling with the 300. You about them that money. <laughs> we coming for our money. This is no funeral professor today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big horn Kev. Hey, Kev's in the building, too. And Kev's got his. I saw Kev wearing his the other day. I had a picture of him at the, at the end of one of my videos or whatever. I was like, there you go. Hey, we the 300. We out in the streets. We coming for our money. We not messing around. I'm not sitting there taking no popcorn rides. I'm not messing with these people, man. It's like, nope. If I know this person don't want to pay the money that they paid for it, and I don't want to get the money that they're trying to offer me for it, there's room in the middle. We can negotiate. There's some room in the middle. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk about, okay, if you need to get from here to there, I want to take you, but not at this price right here. If the apps don't want me to negotiate, then fuck the apps. They out of the deal now. Now it's between me and you. What's up? What's good? Turn that app off. Cool. I'll cancel the ride, whatever. Let's do this shit. Let's get this done because you got to get from point A to point B and I'm standing right here. A lot of people like that deal. A lot of people say, oh, I want to leave it on the app. Cool, cool. Cancel that shit and move on. Let them get a driver who wants to do that. Because a lot of times I don't want to be bothered with that. That's why y'all don't see me recording a whole lot because I'm I'm busy out doing my thing now. I'm trying to make money now. At first, you know, when I was driving around, I was trying to, you know, abide by the terms of service. I still abide by the terms of service on a lot of what I do. But when it comes down to it, terms of service don't pay the bills around here. And they stealing my tips. They taking our fares away. They cutting us. I mean, Fest was showing zero dollar fares out there. What kind of shit is that? Zero dollar fares. That ain't no terms of service deal for a contractor. A zero dollar fare. Nah, turn them apps off, man. Go get your money. Don't let these people fuck with you like that. Turn your apps off. Go get your money. What up, Jamil? My brother, my brother. He's in the building. Yeah, Lakers lost last night, but still made 85 cash rides of the game was over. Telling you, that's how you do it, brother. Because I'm going to tell you right now, these apps are selling us. They selling us like slaves. We got, hey, man, here's a $120 ride for you, but they're going to turn around and give us 40 out of the 120. They selling us. Sell yourself. You can go out there. You can speak. Closed mouths don't get fed. Desperate drivers don't get bread like my man Logan said. If you don't speak up on your money, you're not going to get no money. If you sit around letting these apps sell you out, they're going to sell you out. That's just what they do. And the moment you start standing up, what up, Cray? Hope you got your shirt, Cray. I sent it out the other day, but I got another surprise for you coming too. I got something for you. But yeah, if you don't stand up for yourself, like how we stand up for ourselves, April the 1st, we stood up. You know, February the 14th, we stood up. This is what we doing. And if the apps don't want us to do that, then they need to sit down at the table and say, okay, this is how we play the game. We're going to start paying you guys more. We're going to let you guys bid on how much you want to drive for tonight. What's your? And I guarantee all these pigeon drivers, they're going to see, they're going to be taking all these little cheap piddly rides. And they're going to see us with nice bank accounts because we ain't selling ourselves short. They're going to end up having to level up because if they don't level up, the moment their car breaks, they ain't got no profit to fix it. They out the game. They can't keep up with these new 50 rides instead of 30 rides, 50 rides on Hertz. They out the game. A lot of these people are pricing themselves out of the game. We ain't got to worry about them. Crazy. Yes, I love the shirt. There you go. There you go. Like I said, hey, this we the 300, the 300 barbecue. When you when you out there doing delivery, you represent the area. Hey, they know who you are. They're going to see your name on the back. Craig got one. <laughs> Yeah, evil wins when the good do nothing. That's right, brother. We got to get up and do something. What's up, Severa? Happy birthday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's Severa shit. Happy birthday. <laughs> Man. And like I said, we got to go out there and we got to represent. Oh, nice boys. Well, I got it. That's why I put the site up in the, uh, I pinned the site to the top of the comments because people can take a look and see what's in there. Most of my shirts are statement shirts, man. They statement shirts. When I wear them to the gym, I work out. And that, and that shirt that says, ask me how Uber rips you off, rips us off, I wear that shit to the gym. People see it. I'm sitting there working out that motherfucker. On. I represent when I go out. I speak for drivers when I go out. If somebody going to be like, man, I see a dude at the gym sometimes. It says Uber steals fares and tips. Uber and Lyft steal fares and tips. Motherfucker be working out. Dude come in with a hot Uber rips us off shirt working out. I represent drivers when I'm out in public. I ain't got no shame in what's going on. 
If these apps got shame and what's going on, then they need to stop having shit like this going on. That's how you fix it. You say, you know, we're going to start paying these drivers better. Other night, I did a ride the other night. They charged the people $14, 14 bucks. I got $3 out of that 14. It was like a mile and a half ride. $3. Had I not had that $3 surge, I wouldn't have got $6. They charge these people $14 for a mile and a half from Jefferson right up Grand Avenue. They just, they didn't want to park downtown. So they parked up Grand. So I have to pay for downtown parking. Cost them 14 bucks to get back to their car, mile and a half. I'm thinking I could have just told these people 10 bucks, man. I'll take 10 bucks, wrap the road 10 bucks, and I'd have been better off. Yet the app charged these people 14, gave me three. Had I not had a $3 surge attached, I would have got $3 with that shit instead of six. That's how these apps do. So I ended up getting six out of 14, which is still less than 50%. But that's what these apps are doing. They don't care. If they're going to go out there and sell us as slaves and we accept it, they're going to keep doing it over and over. But if I know, if I see somebody downtown now and I see that they need a mile and a half ride, I'm going to roll up, be like, hey, man, you just going back to your car, you parked up the street. Yeah, I'm just parked up the street. I'll tell you what, I'm going to cancel this ride. Just give me 10 bucks. I'll take, oh, cool, man, because they was charging me $14. Now, fuck that, man. Just give me 10 bucks. They ain't giving me shit anyways. Let's do this shit like this. And we get it out the way. That's how we handle business around here. We don't play with these people. These corporate thugs want to sit in their suits and sell slaves all day. Let them. There's pigeons out there. Let them. We ain't the ones. We not the ones. Yeah, Kev, I'm just, these shirts are conversation starters. When I'm at the airport or I'm picking up somebody's luggage, I got to get out the car and they'll see my shirt. They'll be like, oh, I like the shirt. Because <laughs> that shit, man, hey, I get it started. And we'll have a conversation while we riding. What we talking about? How we run podcasts? We do live streams. I be just driving, chatting with people. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I talk to drivers all the time. The other, the other, somebody hit me up in the comments today. I think it was Matt or somebody hit me up in the comments today saying they picked up a pastor that I gave a car to, his name was Thomas, gave a car to him and everything, dropped him off over at Varsity over on Mill. And I'm like, we talk, everybody knows. We're networking. We're talking to our community. Our community knows us as drivers now. They know who we are. We we the 300, motherfucker. We coming. When you got passengers that know who we are and they're talking to other drivers and drivers know who we talking to, and Matt's like, oh, yeah, that's my boy Jay Watts. I know who you're talking about. We do a lot. These drivers, I mean, these riders are now knowing we're all linked together. They know we linked. We ain't just some random ass drivers in town. Oh, you know, yeah, I know Jeff. He's got the orange beamer. Yeah, yeah, that's my boy. Oh, man, that's my riders. They know we linking up. We coming. And it's like, hey, man, we all got the same message. Don't let these apps rip you off. If you need a ride, talk to me. I tell all these riders out there, have four or five drivers in your Rolodex. Have these motherfuckers ready. If one can't make it, call the second one. Second one can't make it, call the third one. Have five drivers at any time because you don't know what part of town we in. Have five drivers in your phone. Put Jeff Uber, Matt Uber, Kev Uber, Jamil Uber, Severa Uber. Have all that shit. So when you pull up Uber, everybody's name pops up. Just text one of us. If we in the area, we'll come get you. You ain't got to rely on the app. Call one of us. We'll be there. I might not be able to do it. Severa can go do it. If Safari can't do it, she right. Jamil, he can go do it. But this is how we got to network with these riders. We got to have the same message, have the same purpose. We all trying to get profits to feed our family, just like corporate trying to sell slaves and make profits on our backs. Same shit. They got, that's what the app's doing. So we got to st stand together and do it ourselves. Would it turn out to be a dumber grenade, but the cops can get them because of the protests? Oh, oh. The cops, what happened, Severa? Some, uh-oh, let me, Severa says some. the New York story, the Uber driver found a grenade in his car. <laughs> this dude found it. Hey, as long as it got the pin in it, you good to go. He found a grenade in his car. Holy shit. Man, man, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, big Kev, man. Like I said, that 300, man, when you walk in the building, that's why I made it so big. I wanted the 300 to go clear across the chest so they know what we about. When we walk in the building, that's the biggest thing they're going to they gonna remember that. And the motherfucker going to keep seeing that 300 popping up. Every other driver cruising up one day. Man, I, dude, I saw another dude with that same shirt on, man, like two days ago. Oh, yeah, man. We all on the same live stream. We be getting down, man. See, they see some lady come up to the airport. Lady jump out. Hey, I don't see like four drivers with the 300. What's this 300 all about? Like you said, it's going to create a conversation. And I said, well, this is what it's about. It's about profits. It's about people in this country working their ass off every day and not getting the benefit of it. That's what the 300 is about. 
we coming for our money. That's what this is about. We done playing these games. They want to talk. Oh, yeah, well, we're kind of doing drivers dirty. We, we're taking drivers for advantage of driver. Yeah, you are. We know it. We ain't stupid. You ain't got to tell us what we already know. We telling you we coming for our money. If you ain't giving it to us, we going to take it. Thank you, Knight, for the super chat. I thank you for the 300 stepping up my game. Smack these ass for 500 this weekend, and that's part-time after my W-2 Sunday and took from off. Hey, I'm going to tell you what. Knife juggler, I'm going to tell you like this. You made 500 on a weekend. You do four weekends like that a month. That's two Gs. That's like living for free. You, you renting your place for free. You buying your house for free. That's mortgage right there. You work four weekends. You paying mortgage. That means for the money that you're making during your W-2, that's profit sitting in the bank right now in case you need to say, hey, you know what? I need to take a week off. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You can take a week off and still be in the game. A lot of these drivers are out there driving 80 hours a week. They can't take a week off because they'll be so far behind. How they going to not drive for that whole week? They sitting in a rental car. You got to do at least 50 trips in that rental car to keep that rental car. They don't have the luxury like we got it. Take your time off. Enjoy your motherfucking life. Kick back. Relax. A lot of these drivers want to, oh, I'd rather rent. I, now, I don't want to be no rental slave because you can't just take a random week off. If you take a random week off, you got to go back, take the car back, pay all these administrative fees, do all this crazy shit and everything else like that. You don't have a good life. You got the slave life when you rent from Hertz and Avis and all these places. They pushing you to keep driving over and over. My homegirl Robin hit me up the other day. They hit me up. The, she hit me up the other day. She says, you know what? Each driver is worth X amount of dollars to the apps if they can sell these apps, these backwards ass trips. So the more drivers they have and sign up, and we were talking about stock back and forth, the more drivers they have sign up, that kind of looks at their future forecast of potential revenue, especially if they're stupid drivers. If they're smart drivers, they can't bank on us because we're too smart. Yeah, Severe, I'm telling you, haven't worked all this week, all bills paid, and you deserve that. As a contractor, you deserve that. If you don't want to open a store this week, don't even open a store this week. Kick back for a second. The apps don't like that shit. The apps want drivers to say, I can't close shop. I got to keep going. My bills are too high. My life is too backward. My debt is too high. I got to keep grinding this shit out 80 hours. I got to pay for this rental car. That's what they want you to do. And when you're not like that, they have no control over you because you're truly independent of their fuckery. Now, if you're locked into it and you got to do the 50, 50 drives a week, how the hell are you going to not do, if you say, well, I'm going to take all week off. I'm only going to drive, you know, Saturday, Sunday. You got to drive 25 rides a day. And most likely they're going to be 25 shit rides. So you busting your ass for 50 rides just a weekend just to keep this ragged ass rental car that your 50 rides probably ain't even going to cover. The fuel probably ain't, you can't pay for the fuel in them 50 rides. And you sitting around like, you know, if you're making only, let's say, average $6 a ride, you just made $300 gross. And that's not counting the fuel you got to pay, nor the rental car you got to pay. 50 rides ain't shit. Not on these apps. They can't force me to do 50 rides. If I do 50 rides in a week, oh, trust me, each ride better be around at least $10, $11, $13, something like that. Because if I'm doing 50 rides, I better be making like $10 to $13 a ride. I want to get at least $650 out of the deal. But I'm not sitting around with no $6 a ride. No, I'm not doing that. So that means I got to always have surge. I got to always have a tip. I got to always have money coming in. If I don't have that coming in, I'm not taking a ride. See, that's what it is right there. No doubt. I own two houses. Got uh, my 25-year-old, one of my rental units. Knife, that's life right there. You live in the American dream. The, and somebody, we were talking about that in the membership group, how the dream is taking money. Is it nope, I'll log off quick. You got to take money and you kind of recycle it. You buy your own property, let your family rent from you. So you be the landlord for your own family. You keeping the money within your own family. So your empire is growing. You're not having to pay for somebody else's empire. Us as rideshare drivers, we're paying for other people's empires right now. If we owned our own app or did our own services, private drivers, we'd be funding our own empire. Right now we're funding another empire. So when you rent, when you buy a house or you buy a condo or a townhouse and you rent to your family member, you and your family member are building your own empire. You're not giving that money to some landlord somewhere. Like me, with my house, I got to pay a, a, a mortgage company. I'm building their fucking empire. If I had this house for cash or whatever, then I can like sell it or do what I want, buy two houses. Now I can start building my own empire. We all living up under somebody else's empire right now. But the trick is to do it for as less as you can, pocketing how much profit you can for yourself. 
Because we ain't nothing but batteries in the matrix. Robin said that shit the best. We ain't nothing but batteries inside of the matrix. That's it. We just keeping this shit going. We just keeping it moving. So the easiest thing for you to do is to pull yourself out of the matrix. Try to get as much profits out of you can out of ride share. Otherwise, you're going to be driving for these fools nonstop. Yeah. Big horn, 100% of the apps work for, for us, not the fucking apps. Yep. I'll see you right here. And Indy's the same way. He says, hey, Uber needs to stop holding my car hostage for their predatory $2,500 deductible. Fuck Uber. And that's Indy. And like I said, you're a case that a lot of YouTubers won't even talk about. Ain't that some shit? Everybody want to talk about, you need to drive on the app. You need to do this. You need to do that. I'm like, why don't y'all talk to Indy? This is somebody who really stayed on the app and did exactly what all these YouTubers are saying, and she's fucked in the deal right now. Nobody wants to talk about that because it smacks them in their rhetoric in the face. What they tell them to say, hey, Jeff, question, what do you think your operating cost is per mile for your vehicle? I don't know. I just look at my bank account every month. I tell people that shit in my videos, man. If my bank account's not going up, then I'm not doing something right. So cost of operating my vehicle don't mean shit to me. Honestly, it really don't. And I know a lot of people like to do that. They like to go say, well, because I do my own labor. If I do my own labor for brakes and everything, I did all four of my brakes on my car for 100 bucks. That's not going to help nobody else out because everybody don't do BMW brakes. I just did my own thermostat on my car. Me saying how much that's not going to help everybody else. So when I do my repairs, I put them on my channel for repairs and I help people like fix their cars and keep money. But everybody. So I try to minimize the fuckery on my channel by, by saying only what I do with my expenses. Because my expenses is not going to help nobody else out. Nobody else drives a BMW. Nobody else works on their own shit. So it's, to me, it's, it's stupid content. Honestly, it is. Because everybody's cost is going to be different based on their vehicle. It, it's a moot point. So I say, check your bank account every month. If you're going down, you're not making good decisions. If you're going down, you should be able to reconcile your bank account like what we do in corporate America. Reconcile your bank account. Say, why am I $500 less? You look, look. Oh, I forgot. I replaced the water heater this month. You're reconciling your true profit of your life now. If you're going up, then you say, I'm doing something right. I'm saving money. I didn't eat out all last month. Now I'm eating in. I'm cooking now. And so you go, oh, shit, I'm cooking now. Cool, cool. And now your bank account's going up. Hey, I'm shopping at the Goodwill. I'm not buying shit off of Nike.com now. I found the shit that was on closeout sale, whatever, from the Goodwill. I go buy cargo shorts from the Goodwill all the time. They still have the brand new tags on them and shit. People just like, they donate shit to the Goodwill. I go pick that shit up because I don't want to throw my money away on fuckery. I just don't. So the average cost is $8.50 per mile on the average car. $8.50, $8.50 per mile. That's the average $8.50 per mile. Yeah, I don't know. And the, and the thing is, too, and, and as far as like cost per mile and shit like that, dude, if you were to go in and trade your car in today, if I went and trade this BMW in today, went 108,000 miles on this motherfucker, being a 2019, right now they're selling 2019s with 54,000 miles on it for 21 grand, all 31. So I'm already 10,000 in the hole based on current values, but because I got high mileage, my shit is less than 21. It's probably worth like 15 to 14. So you got to start calculating that into the cost. The actual value of your car goes into the cost of your you doing this job. It's too much fuckery for one person to do. Way too many fucking spreadsheets. So I tell my fuckers, it's like, you know what? No, nah, I'm not worried about that shit. I'm not. Because people don't look at beating the car up, driving all these fucking miles. That cost. Oh, man, I, I get this much per gallon. It's not about how much you want per gallon. It's what is your car's worth if you took this motherfucker to a dealership today, right now? Because they probably selling your exact same year making model with way less miles for way less what you got on that. So that's what I look at. When I look at costs, man, it's way too much involved at a level where, you know, the average person who probably can't even budget a fucking checkbook, balance a checkbook, this is above their pay grade. So I can't really fuck with it. Like, it'll be a moot point on my channel. People be arguing back and forth all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 101,000 on my 2011 DTS. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. What up, young boy? Yeah. And see, and so the way I do it is I look at, Opportunity cost is a better cost for me because if I looked at my average cost per mile on my car and, and said that needs to validate my life, then I'm cheap. Honestly, I'm cheap. So I look at opportunity cost. I could go back to work in corporate, making about a hundred thousand a year. That's an opportunity cost. I could work on cars. I mean, the other day I made like three, four hundred in a day just working on cars one day, and I never left my house. 
I sat at my house and worked on cars. I did my neighbor's truck. I got to do some other work on his truck. They got to go to the wheel centers because it's where wheel cylinders leaking and they don't have brakes on the big work truck. So I got to take the whole drum off and do all that. So I got to, that truck will be over here within the next day or so. So I'm looking at opportunity cost as the value of my time. I don't look at me driving ride share as the value of my time. Me driving ride share is me passing time. So I look at YouTube as an opportunity cost because I tell motherfuckers, I only make like a dollar an hour on YouTube, real shit. So that's why in February, I didn't do a whole lot of YouTubing, but I made a lot of money in on in real life. <laughs> so so when you look at when you look at my February money for YouTube, it's gonna be way less than what I made in January. Cause in January, all I did was YouTube. But in February, I made I made eight hundred dollars out of my well, no, it was four hundred dollars less. But I made five thousand dollars more because I gave up YouTube that month. When I gave up YouTube in February, I made four to five thousand dollars more that month. And with YouTube, I only went down four hundred dollars. So I'll trade four hundred for five thousand profit. And that's how YouTube works. When I tell people I don't make a lot with YouTube because I have an opportunity cost. I'm a mechanic. Not only am I a mechanic, I can say I don't want to do live streams. I'll just take in clients and do cars all day. I can make $300 every hour and a half, two hours in my driveway. I do it all the time. So that's how I look at my life. Opportunity cost. Not how much does it cost me to drive this BMW? What is my gas worth? What are my tires worth? That shit is minor to me. What's more major to me is me, my time. Jeff, you're a mechanic. You can go and fucking do an axle on the goddamn car right now. Fucking $350 take you a couple of hours. You just made $350 in a couple of hours. YouTube only pays you a dollar an hour. So you got to work 350 hours of editing, doing fucking live streams. You got to work 350 hours to make what you can make an hour and a half in your driveway. So I look at opportunity calls. That's why I say, man, my channel's a little different. A lot of people, they they like to, you know, drill into it only costs me this much for my tires and then it costs me this much for my, you know, my sensor. And it fuck all. It's a moot point. Look at your bank account every month. Are you doing better or are you doing worse? If you're doing worse and you're reconciling it, you've got to make an adjustment somewhere. Make an adjustment. Say, I'm going down in my bank account. So the adjustment is you and like we used to do this shit in corporate. You analyze. Why did our bank accounts go down, y'all? We never worried about, well, how much does our average room rate, you know, cost us for the carpet and for the vacuums? We never cared about costs. We looked at all our bank accounts in corporate. If it went up or down, if revenue goes up, revenue goes down, we got to discuss it now. And we find out why. And now that we found out why it went up and down, we make that change. We make that decision. You make that adjustment. We can't always focus on the little piddly shit. I only, you know, it cost me 13 cents a mile. You know, this I'm not worried about 13 cents a mile. I can make $350 in an hour and a half on my driveway. That's more important to me than 13 cents. Oh, it only cost me 13 cents a mile. Fuck 13 cents a mile. That's, to me, that's minor. It's misdemeanor because I think bigger. I think, Jeff, you could be fucking marketing your fucking mechanic service right now. Somebody needs a transmission. I could do a transmission for $1,000. Transmission shops charge about $3,800 to $4,300. I could charge them one grand in labor. 1G in labor. I can have that transmission out by lunchtime, repaired and back in. As long as the parts are available, I can have it back in before I go to sleep that night. I can make one grand a day and never leave my fucking driveway. I've done it many times. So I look at the opportunity of what is Uber taking away from me? What is Lyft, what is, you know, excuse me, Lyft taking, what is YouTube taking away from me? Because I know me. And that's why in the membership group, we pushing business, man. We pushing business. We pushing profits. We doing this shit. Yeah, man. Hey, <laughs> look, listen, hey, much for taking opportunity calls on the chain for school. Hey, knife, I'm telling it's a community build, man. This channel is a community build because I know there's somebody where it's going to click in their head one day and they're going to say, you know what? I do auto detail, man. I do auto detail and they're going to bust their ass and they're going to build an auto detail business. They're going to have ride share on the side and they're going to build auto detail. Next thing you know, they say, dude, I got a whole office parked and I'm doing now, man. Thanks for putting that fire up under my ass. This channel is a community building channel, man. Every day I get on here, I hope motherfuckers say, hey, you know what, man? I'm driving less, but my bank account's going up. How? I'm, I'm doing higher profit rides. And with the time I'm saving by not having to drive, I got a side business I'm running now, dude. This is what I'm doing on the side now. How can you hate on that? You got to be proud of that person because they figured they sat down, looked at their bank account, and they analyzed, how can I get this motherfucker to go up 
instead of staying stagnant or going down. How can I get it to go up? There's a way to do it in the area I'm living. How can I do it? What up, King James? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ride share takes too much time for the money earned there. And, and Etherman, this is what we saying, man. What up, Miss MB? These people in, in, that run these corporate entities in ride share and delivery, they know how much the time is taking. When I see these $3 deliveries that's taking like 19 and 20 minutes, you can only do three of those an hour. So they're paying somebody $9 an hour to do that. There's no way this shit should even be on an app with grown people who have kids, rent, mortgage, insurance, need profits in case they do have a fucking tooth. You got to go to the dentist and fix. How are you going to do that shit on $3 every 19 minutes? That's not adult level shit. The corporations, are like I said, the professor showed it on his video. The dude was wanting a $16 sandwich. Going through the apps, they charged him $40. That's a $24 margin right there from what they paid the restaurant to what they got. And they probably paid the restaurant less, but a $24 margin for delivery. That's probably only a couple of miles guaranteed. The driver didn't get $24. The driver probably got three out of that 24. The 21 went straight to the corporation. So when you got people doing shit like that, you got like Tony delivers up in Seattle. You got to take matters into your own hands. Because as long as you allow yourself to be treated like a kid, treated like a slave, as long as you allow that shit, they're going to keep doing it because that pumps their stock up. That pumps their corporation up. That gets them investors. We have nothing to do with their investors. We have nothing to do with their fucking bottom line unless we're taking money off their bottom line. We don't pay them shit. They take money from us. We don't pay them nothing. They take money from us for everything we do. They'll charge somebody $85, give us 19 out of that. And say we doing well, we gave you $18 for you know it was like seven miles, but you charge this person for all the crazy traffic and all the surge and all this shit. So I'm gonna make $18, but it's gonna take me 37 minutes to make this $18. And it's a big ass event right here going on. I should be making way more than that at an event at this size. $18 in 37 minutes. I can make that shit on a regular day. Why am I getting paid that during an event? If this is an event, pay me like it's an event. But because they won't do that, guess what we do? We go take that fucking money like it's an event. I'm going to roll up. Hey, this is what they're trying to pay me, man. Man, damn, they only, they paid us like, it charges like $82. Tell you what, 60 bucks, 60 bucks and I'll do it. All right, bet. Cancel. Let's ride. Because the app ain't paying me shit but $22 any fucking ways. Well, if I say 60, it saves you 22 and it makes me 40. We good now. Now we good. We both happy. Apps don't want that shit to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, young boy. Man, man. Exactly, man. Right here. Hours to make 100 bucks now. Dude, that's why I can't drive, brother. I can't drive, man. It kills me because we used to make 100 bucks in like an hour and a half, two hours. And it was because services out there, the money was good. The tips were coming through. People were appreciative. Now people are getting charged so much, they, they thinking that the tip is included in that. They're like, damn, $72 for this ride? Shit, from the airport to my house? And we getting 24 out of the 72. So they thinking, why should I tip on top of that? It's like, dude, I just paid seven. Use y'all go home and the, the ride instead of 72, I'm only paying like 43. What's the extra $30 for? It show lane for us because we ain't getting that shit. The apps are getting it because we allow it. We tolerate that. We got to sit down and say, we ain't going to let these apps gouge you, man. We know right now y'all getting gouged right now. It's an event going on. You at the airport, you getting gouged right now. This is what they giving me. And the, the rider goes, you know what? I'm paying almost $70 for this shit. Like, yeah, so I'll tell you what. You give me 50, we cool. Oh, that's a much better deal. And you ain't even got to tip me. If you give me 50, you ain't even got to tip me. So you saving at 70 and the tip you guys going to pay on the end, it'd be like close to $90. You only giving me 50 bucks. So you saving almost $40 just fuck with me straight up. I'm helping you out, rider. I'm getting you home in the same car he's going to use anyways. Throw your luggage in the back and let's roll. Oh, yeah, man, man, man. That's crazy right there. Oh, yeah, Severe. She said that I've noticed more surge in my area lately, but with Lyft, but the ride will offer 50 cent a mile, even with the surge. Lyft surge ain't real. I figured that shit out a long time ago. It's only real if your trip is like a mile and a half to two miles. <laughs> if, if that shit's five miles, the surge ain't real. Because what they're going to do is they're going to charge you like, they're going to give you 30 to 40. I was getting trips the other day for $2 and like 28 cents, 233, 262. I was like, there's no way these should be actual fares on this app. No way. 
and now I'm getting like a five dollar surgeon to make it a seven dollar trip for like three miles. I'm like, cool, no problem. But you were willing to give me two dollars and thirty three cents for three miles. That's what you were willing to pay me. And you probably charge this person eleven dollars for that shit. And I'm sitting there like these people are crazy, man. Oh, I like this. I like this valve. Hey, we need to find out how we can start a class action lawsuit against their commercial insurance fees. I got a couple of people in my email right now. Oh, he dogs got the LLC file. That's what's up. Hey, let us know how that goes. Stay in touch with me on that one. Stay in touch because I want I got to do some LLC work myself because I got to talk to Jamil about some airport stuff. And I believe got to have an LLC filed. And right now, JMBTs is filed with it. But when networks is not filed with the LLC. So I think I got to do the LLC with my win networks as well. But keep talking to me about that one. But Val was saying a class action lawsuit against the commercial insurance fees. I had people in my email trying to opt out of Uber insurance or Lyft insurance. I think it was Uber insurance. They sent a message. The AI is responding back. You know, this is AI. Because they're like, hey, I got my the, the dude was like, hey, I got my own commercial insurance. How can I opt out of using you guys commercial insurance or I'm not double paying for insurance? And it was like, we're sorry that you're having issues with your insurance. And we're sorry this and that. But the, and it was like something stupid. I'm going to have to do a video on it. Made no sense in the conversation of what this guy was trying to have. And all of a sudden, what up, Rob Flo? And all of a sudden, it went to something like, you know, you know, hopefully you end up having a great day. And thank you for driving for Uber and Lyft and all this stuff. And just in the chat. That was it. It was like there was no discussion about what he said at all. It was all AI shit. AI does not know how to respond to, to the question of, I would like to opt out of the insurance. How do I do that? Either AI don't know how to do it or AI wasn't instructed on how. Because if in, it was instructed, it would say, you cannot opt out of insurance under our on our app because as being one of our business partners, you it's mandatory that you use our insurance. It would say that if it was programmed to answer that question. But if it wasn't a program, if it knows the answer to that question is the moment you say you can opt out and this person go get their own insurance, we won't be making profits anymore. AI was trained to not answer that question because it would give up the most, the biggest corporate shit loophole ever. It's us using their corporate, their commercial insurance instead of getting our own insurance. Oh, yeah, you love I'm back, brother. So, yeah, AI is taking over a lot of jobs, y'all. Yeah, I'm telling you, Severe, it is. So the fact that the AI wouldn't answer the question, it wouldn't answer it, that tells me that this is all programmed to fuck us over. It's not programmed to be business partners with us. It's programmed to fuck us over somehow. So why can't we not opt out of an insurance? It's, it's like just like when I was talking to Pedro, I said, imagine going to a car lot. And you buy a car and you say, well, I'm going to get insurance. And the car lot says, we could sell you our insurance. And you go, okay, how much is it? Oh, it's only $15 a day. So, and, and it, it sounds small, $15 a day for car insurance. You say, damn, that's cheap. 15 bucks a day deal. I'll do it. 15 bucks a day. You drive off the lot with the $15 a day insurance. That's $450 a month. For basic car insurance on that car you just drove when it probably only really costs you 189 you could probably go to all state or, or state farm and get it for 189 but you just agreed to 15 dollars a day in 10 days you've paid more in 10 days than what you'd pay an insurance place and you still got 20 more days in a month to go so all those other 20 days is all profit for those for that dealership that's what i think uber and lyft are doing they're saying hey you could just use our insurance while you're doing ride share. You don't have to go, but make sure you got full coverage on your car. Make sure you got full coverage. Okay, I got full coverage. They don't, as you as you can see, Uber and Lyft never tells you that it's mandatory that you have ride share insurance. Uber and Lyft does, they will never tell you it's mandatory that you need it because it's not mandatory. If if you saw my last video, ride share insurance only covers you. When you're not on the app. So why does the apps give a shit whether or not you got it? They don't care if you got it or not. Ride share insurance don't cover you if somebody's in the car. So why does the app care if you got ride share insurance? The app just wants to make sure you got full coverage on your car so they can go after you. If some if they want to bill you for some shit on insurance, they'll go through subrogation and talk to your insurance company to get money out of your insurance company. But and yeah, exactly. So I was in transit for three years before Uber. Yep. 
Damn, 600 them for a six month policy with Geico. The Ice Boys win. That's it. 100 bucks a month is a deal, man. That's a deal right there. 100 bucks a month. But as you can see, Uber and Lyft will never tell you it is mandatory that you have car insurance, that you have ride share insurance if you drive on our platform. They don't give a shit. Ride share insurance is when you still got your app running. That's why I tell people on that video I did turn your shit to last ride. When you turn your shit to last ride and that person gets out of the car and you end that ride, you're back on your private insurance now. Your private insurance kicks in the moment you're not on the app. If you're on the app and you have an accident because you drop somebody off and you started driving and you still got Uber activated and you driving, bam, you hit somebody, you better have ride share insurance because your app is going to say you hit those people, but you were actually logged on to Uber. Because you were logged on to Uber doing ride share, you're a ride share driver for that time period. Everybody in America is a private citizen right now. You can walk out your house as a private citizen. You can get in your private car, drive down the street in the private. You own private insurance the whole time you operating as a private citizen. The moment you turn that app on, you're declared as a ride share driver now. Because you turn, even if you're just scouting, even if you're just scouting. If you just, I just want to see what the, what the app look like. What up, Frank? Hot facts, my man, what's good, my brother? Even if you just turn the app on and you go, I just want to see what the what the surge is out here right now. So you turn the app on. You don't plan on working. You just want to see the surge. You turn the app on. You drive it. Bam, you make a mistake and hit somebody. Oh, shit. It was like five minutes. You never took a ride. You never did. Now, you just want to see what the surge was. You try to turn the app off. You do all your paperwork, do everything, get all the stuff signed. You know, insurance is handling everything. Three weeks later, they hit you up. Hey, man, we hit up Uber and Lyft. Were you logged on to Uber when you had that accident? Because you had the accident at this time, but yet it says you were logged onto the app at that time. Yeah, oh, well, we can't cover you then. Thank you, DeVree. DeVree, what's good with that? What up, Upfront Price and Lyft? Let me put this up real quick. Upfront Price and Lyft always shaves miles for minutes in their favorite contact support. They never adjust your owners. Yeah. And, and that's what they'll do. They'll ask your engine. They'll ask you, hey, was you logged onto the app? Yeah, but I wasn't working, though. I wasn't working. I was just driving. No, but you were logged onto the app, and you don't have the ride share insurance endorsement on your shit. So we're not covering you. And you'll be sitting there like, what you mean you're not covering me? Well, you were on. Yeah, lap is automatic. That's right. That's right. Automatic. And you got to tell them, put it on last ride. Because as long as you're on the app with the passenger in your car, Uber and Lyft has to cover any liability, any shit you hit or whatever goes on out there in the real world. Uber and Lyft has to cover that. Now, what happens to your car is based on you paying Uber that twenty five hundred dollar high as deductible. But we should have our own commercial insurance going through our own commercial insurance, not through their shit, because we deserve a lower deductible. And so if we end up having an accident with nobody in the car at all, no apps turned on at all, you're a private citizen. It don't make a difference if you did ride share 30 minutes ago. You could have said, I did ride share 30 minutes ago and I quit ride share forever because that was the worst goddamn passenger I ever had. So that was the last ride I was ever going to do. How they going to tell you you lying? They don't know what happened to your last ride. The last ride probably, you know, was going to assault you and stab you. You said, you know what? I'm giving up ride share. This is bullshit. So you ended the ride. You called it good and drove off. They can't call you a ride share driver no more. Just like one day might be the last time you ever shoot a basketball. You might retire after this game. This might be the last time you play golf. You might retire after this match. Nobody can tell you when your last ride is going to happen. So if you have an accident and you go, oh, man, I'm just done. Oh, well, if somebody hits you, Jeanette, they better have insurance. And if they don't have insurance, you've got to have uninsured motorists on yours. Put uninsured motorists. If they do have insurance, but their cover coverage can't cover the type of vehicle you got, you have to have underinsured motorists as well. So you got to have the uninsured motorists and the underinsured motorists both on your policy. I got them on mine because I don't think a whole bunch of people out there got insurance that can pay for the level. I mean, if, if I end up with, you know, they got to total my car out and they say, well, his insurance only goes up to twenty five thousand. And I'm like, oh, shit, well, I owe 30. Well, it's a ten thousand dollars short. I have underinsured motorists on my car. So underinsured means my insurance now has a policy that they will cover my car now because like, hey, sometimes you got to do it like that. You got to look at other people like real actual people out there and how they do. Since my premium was absolutely skyrocket, but I added uninsured motors. Yeah. 
Sometimes you got to add a ride flow. You got to add it, man. I don't know. You might need another insurance company. Yeah. So it's time to wake up. Jeff, want to thank you. The Undergrade Road Trick paid me 26 on my first delivery this morning. <laughs> you got it, baby. You got it. You was like, Paw Patrol, shit, let's get this delivery going. Hell yeah, that's how you got to do it, brother. That's how you do it. Yeah, exactly. Carry enough insurance. Exactly. See, Jamil knows. Jamil's got that. He's got all that um other insurance. He's got a commercial, too. Hold up, brother. Let me see something. I'm going to do like this. I know Jamil's out there right now. Hold up for a second. I'm, hey, Jamil, I just put the link up, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Jamil come on for a second. So, Jamil, because he's the insurance genius with this shit, man. So, you have to plot deeper than just ride chair insurance. Hold up for a second. Then the fact early schools don't teach finances, all approved that control is the ideology for American corporations. The Ponzi behavior validates my thesis. Ethermint, man, you peach to the choir. I've said it the whole time. Why do you think they're prepping and indoctrinating all these kids? to get second jobs oh you should be this we could put you and fix you and make you this we can put you in a system as this and that's what it is hold up kev i'm gonna get you on in a minute i'm, I'm trying to get jamil on for a second yeah and that's the thing is like they're throwing people into the mix they want to get people involved into being a, a cog in the wheel that's it because if you could put people in the cog in the wheel they don't have the the power like we we like to go out and do our own thing we like to be independent contractors entrepreneurs out of control but to keep somebody in control you've got to indoctrinate them to believe that hey you need us we don't need you what up tiger yeah what if, here we go wait a minute wait is that the same thing with my encounter with an airport porter when i was uh waiting for a passenger off the app yep yep and that's right there they don't teach you because these banks make money off of people being in debt and they sell that debt at discounts so they sell debt at discounts and everything. Oh, there he is, Jamil. He had to get ready real quick. Hold up for a second. Let, let me get my headset on because I'm not going to be able to hear you unless. There you How go. How you guys doing? How's the family doing? Oh, all good, man. The dogs are happy. Everybody's happy. <laughs> good, good. But I'm glad everybody started talking about this insurance because this is, a, this is a big thing going on right now, man. A lot of channels are really digging into it. And, and I like to say, Honestly, y'all know how we do around here. 300, we was always on the cutting edge of talking shit about the insurance and everybody riding our ass about this insurance. All these channels used to talk shit about us all the time. Well, you guys don't, because we talk about doing cash rides and doing this. Well, you guys don't. And we really started digging into insurance. Now everybody's like, oh shit, we're all getting screwed. Like, didn't we tell y'all pay attention to insurance? <laughs> 100%. Yep. Yeah, well, just so that we, we all get this straight, it, it is very essential that when you do drop off anybody from Uber or Lyft, that you have it as your last ride. Yes, because definitely. that right there will save you with your own personal insurance. But if you have commercial insurance, no matter who you pick up as a livery service, you you can you are you're covered a hundred percent. Yeah, because it's it's from actually any time. Yeah. Yeah, it's designed for work. And you can, and when you got commercial delivery insurance, you can say, I'm always working, whether an app is on or not. You can say, I was out working right now. And you can, hey, I had a client I was supposed to pick up at 11 when I had my accident. So commercial kicks in, private don't have to kick in, and it covers you. Yeah, yeah. But and private like, has nothing to do with it. Yep, exactly. And I think people need to know because I mean with Uber and Lyft, they try to they try to fuck people over. And they say they talk about tears or oh, period one, period two, period three. And they it's that's how they trick you. They tell you about periods. They don't tell you about situations. I never talk about periods. I say if you got somebody in your car and you have the app on the app insurance is going to have to cover you in that in that instance. If you're doing a ride for Uber or Lyft. Now, if you got somebody in your car and you have the apps on, but you're doing a quick cash ride, you might screw yourself. Right. <laughs> like, Turn that app off. God damn it. Turn it off. off. <laughs> yep, exactly. Because you're not working for Uber. You're not doing anything. It's your own time and your own business. Yep, yep. And I'm one of those people that, that believe that, you know, when we pay these premiums as private individuals, as entrepreneurs in this world, every entrepreneur that's doing something, let's say I sell pottery. I throw pottery in my car because I'm going to go take pottery over to this place to see if they want to buy my pottery. I got private insurance on my car, so I'm driving. I get into a wreck. They can't say, oh, well, you know, you were selling pottery at the time. 
Like, motherfucker, I'm driving my car. I'm a private citizen with private insurance. You can't say I'm selling pottery, so you ain't going to cover me. Same with ride share. If I want to take my neighbor across the street to the grocery store, he says, Jeff, my car just broke down, you know, and a mechanic's on his way to fix it. But can you just run me to the store real quick? Cool. I'll run you to the store. No problem. It, Nobody's does, going, it, it really well, doesn't matter at that point. If you're off the app, Nobody should tell you. Nobody should tell you that. Oh, listen. Uh, you know we're not going to cover you or anything. Hey, my insurance will cover me because I'm not in the app. I wasn't exactly. On. You're a private citizen, and you got private insurance. That's right. Now, and I and a lot of people, I think, especially in the, in the YouTube world, they don't understand how they're so indoctrinated to think that they're a riot children like. And we were just talking about that, how people eat from it and just said that how people get indoctrinated into believing they're a cog in the wheel. You're a driver. You're a driver. You're a, and that's what they go to sleep with thinking I'm a driver. I'm a motherfucker. You're a human. You're, you're a, a person. Human. You're a neighbor. You're a dad. You, you're a mom. I'm a driver. I'm a driver. And they fucking go to sleep waking up thinking they're a driver. It's like, dude, you can't operate your whole day thinking you're a driver all day. You're a driver when you're driving somebody. That's right. But if but ain't nobody I, I, in my car, I ain't no driver. That's right. But I do tell you, if you're going to run a business, the best way is to cover yourself and have that commercial insurance. Yep. And yep. that it is not that expensive. A lot of people say yeah, it's six thousand, seven thousand. It's bullshit. It, 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 yeah. it all depends on who your driving record and what you've done. OK, Yep. your car driving record, your state, all of that stuff, man. <laughs> exactly. And and people scare you. And like I said, Valpac just said there's thirty eight thousand dollars a year commercial insurance fees from Uber and Lyft. They think that's what we are supposed to pay. That's what we're sold on their policies. We don't pay that if we do our own policy. Uber could give me that thirty eight thousand dollars myself and say, Jeff, go out and buy your own commercial insurance. We're taking off our shit. OK, well, give me the give me the thirty eight thousand. I'm going to go out and buy myself a six thousand dollar policy. Shit. If we all are <laughs> smart, if we all are smart, we push for our own purchase of commercial insurance. What happens here is that everybody's lazy about it. OK, yep. and they yep. don't want to go the extra terms or whatever uh, extra mile to just to get a discount on it. And to research I, it, yeah. I, and, and let me tell you, I drive in the black platform, right? Yep. But, you know, when I have it on, sometimes uh, uh, the um, the comfort comes in and you take it. OK, because it's a good it, it, it's worth the, the drive. OK, mm -hmm. it, you get, you know, thirty dollars for seven miles. Then yeah. you, you, you accept it. Right. These son of a bitches and I say son of a bitches are screwing us because even though you're in the black platform and you are forced to make sure that you maintain a commercial insurance, okay, they still charge you for it. Yep. Uh, yep especially exactly. when you're in the in in the comfort uh, ride or an XL ride or just an X ride. Let's say yeah. you take it and it's worth it. Right. And see, and this is the but thing, though. And this is the thing. When when you have commercial insurance and you get into an accident, even using the Uber, Uber app or whatever, your commercial insurance covers you no matter what your private part covers, you no matter what. So what Uber does is they go through subrogation. They want to get you for as much as they can. So they go after your commercial insurance company for an accident you were in saying, well, he had commercial insurance. Well, he was driving on your app and they fight back and forth and they tell you, well, unless you give Uber twenty five hundred dollars. You can't you can't use their policy. You got to use your own commercial policy. Well, Uber's been billing me for every ride I've taken on commercial. You're saying they're not going to cover me? No, not unless you come up with twenty five hundred dollars deductible. And that's how they get people. They get people stuck like that. Their their, their insurance, twenty five hundred dollars deductible. My yep. commercial insurance, you can buy five hundred dollars deductible. A hundred. I, I choose a yeah. hundred. But a, a lot of people can get five hundred, a thousand dollar deductible, whatever yep. the deductible you want to, you choose. It's I tell people, you. I tell people, get a thousand dollar deductible, a thousand dollar deductible. You could save that real fast. You could save it fast, especially if you're doing private rides. If you're doing private rides, you're making a hundred dollars a ride, eighty dollars a ride. You do ten of those in a matter of a few months. Throw that shit in the envelope. Throw it in the safe. That's your deductible for when shit goes wrong. Now. It's sitting in the safe. So the moment shit happens, we well, got $1,000 deductible. Okay, we'll take it to a shop. 
And when you drop it off the shop, just pay them the deductible. Most shops, especially like the collision centers over near me, they only charge you half deductible. They charge you half the deductible. They order all your parts and all your shit in. And when you come pick up your car, you pay the other half of the deductible. Insurance is billed for everything. Now, I had a couple of my cars worked on before, and they said, you know me, I'm a smart motherfucker. They said they did some <laughs> shit that they really didn't do. Because I called them, I said, well, all of this dust on these parts of my engine were dust before I brought it here. So how did you say, oh, I think we were going to replace those. All they did was they took them out and put them back in. I'm like, I know. So they had to take all of that shit off the invoice because they billed my insurance for all of that shit. They said that they put OEM back into my engine. They never took. I'm like, these are the same parts. I work on my own shit. This is the same dust from my garage. So you can't tell me these are OEM parts. They got my fucking dust on it from my garage. Oh, we're sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I be checking these motherfuckers <laughs> at the collision centers over here. They don't know me. I'm cynical as a motherfucker. I don't trust nobody. So when I'm going through all my motherfucking documents and I, I went right back over to the collision center on Kyrene and I said, listen, y'all fucking with me right now. I know my deductible is going to be what it is, but you fuck with my insurance company because all this shit in my car is not brand new OEM. That's my own shit. Y'all just put it back in. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, don't fuck with me, man. Well, it's just everybody. Everybody's trying to screw everybody out here in, in this in this business right now. Yeah. The apps are doing it to us right now. And we yep. all need to stand up. And like you said, we're the 300. And this oh, 300 yeah. group is going to get bigger and bigger. Because I think people are, we, we're okay being small. That's the thing. Everybody thinks that we want to be big. We want to be, no, we're okay being small. Because just like motherfucker uh, Severa said earlier, a hand grenade is small. Shit, a hand grenade is little. <laughs> so it's like a, a little ass, a little something little can make a huge goddamn impact. So we're one of those small hand grenade groups. There's Look Kev in there. the building. There's Kev. That's my man, Kev. Kev. <laughs> so you can you can have a small hand grenade and make a really big impact. That's us as a group. We're the 300. We're a small group, but we're very effective. Just like the movie, the 300. We hey, come over the mountain. All good, brother. We coming over the mountain. We're battling. That's what we're doing. We're battling. Oh, the oh, here. oh, he oh Kev's got his own too. Let's see it. Let's see it. Look at uh oh, we the 300. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we got our 300 gear on today. Shit. That's good. Mate, and that's and he be over by Canes. I go over by Canes and Diablos where or yeah, that little bar that he be at sometimes. Uh what is it? Devil's advocate. Yeah. So we gonna wear we wear our gear picking up people over there. They are gonna see us. They're like, wait a minute, I just met a driver with the same shirt on. Like, cause we the three hundred. <laughs> yeah, you, you see what my name looks on the back. If you've seen any of Jeff's videos, you've seen my name on the back already. Yep, yep. Got <laughs> big horn Kev on it, man. Yeah. Uh sorry, I've got my best Donald Trump going on right now with my little freaking uh, no glasses on today. So uh, no, forget uh, the freaking raccoon look here. So, so you rolled around today in the sun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Man, I tell you what, last night, man, it was it was scary last night, man. Freaking, uh, there's a high speed pursuit going down freaking rural road. Yeah, and man, all I could think about is, man, my apps are my apps are off. So if I did would have gotten hit, boom. I mean, man, it would have been hey, first call is the lawyer, second call is everybody else. Smart <laughs> shit, man. And I tell people, man, lead them apps off. Go park yep. in the park a lot and scout, man. I'll park at Circle K quick trip somewhere. I'm not driving around the streets. Even if I got if I got Paw Patrol on and I'm like, I'm gonna go over here and try to get this surge. Usually it's like a area that's not that populated, like neighborhoods. Yep. I'll be tucking myself in the neighborhoods and shit like that. Yep. But if I'm busy areas, oh, I don't mess with it. Nope, turn that shit off. No, nope, yeah, I mean, I, I, I got right here insurance too. My uh my mom, she's always looking out for me, bless her heart. Yeah, she even said, You need right share insurance because you need to be covered. So Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. And seeing that's the and, thing. Uh, and I'm one of those easy drivers, man. I tell yeah. even I tell my other riders, whatever. If we are cruising, we doing something, even in the Jeep or whatever like that. I got like state fucking beyond state minimums for everything. Cause when I built my Jeep, I know how much that Jeep is really worth. That's why I get the money I get. When my attorney goes to bat for me, I get the money I get because I know my insurance yeah. policy. And it's like, dude, like sh I tell people I pay for insurance. But I get money back. <laughs> and then, like I said about these shirts being a conversation starter, I picked up two private rides this freaking weekend just because no. I, I had the shirt on. And I'm like, what's that 300 barbecue about? I said, well, we're we're like a coalition of drivers across the country. They're helping riders and drivers make better profits, do smart decisions. And they're like, so you do private rides? I said, oh, yeah. He goes, well, can you pick me up at the airport in a week? Yeah, sure. I'll pick you up in a week. 
Hell yeah. And oh yeah. And, and then I got you know, and then it's like, well, I'm go- and pick me up, and then uh, and about a week after that, I'm gonna be going back to the airport. Can you still do that? I said, hell yeah, man. Because <laughs> and a lot of drivers out there are they're 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 stupid. I don't know how else to put it. When yeah. somebody is offering them money, no, you gotta you gotta add the stop in the app. You can't give me cash directly. Yeah. I'm sorry, you got. And these motherfuckers really say that shit. I'll be like, you out your mind. Yeah. I'm like, this person's offering you, hey man, I give you twenty bucks right now. If you no, just just add the stop in the app. Just add it in the app. It's like, yeah, no, no, like you know, I got my Venmo and my freaking uh, Zelle on there. No, oh, yeah, I'm like you know, you can even prepay ahead of time, or you yep. can prepay when you get, or you can pay when you get freaking whatever. Just yeah. as long as you pay, I don't care. <laughs> and I and I tell people like when I'm especially when I'm driving around, if I already got them on the app and we already got a ride and they want to add a stop, I tell them, well, don't add a stop. Just give me cash, cash app or Venmo. I'll leave the app running, but yeah. they're going to give me extra money. Just don't add that stop in there. Just tell me where to go. I'm cool. Like, motherfucker, we chatting anyways. You can just tell me, hey, man, make it right up here. I'll go tell me a main intersection. I'll get there. But do not add that shit in the app, no matter what. Because if you add in the app, it's going to charge you like $24, and I'm going to get an extra $3 for that shit. <laughs> it's like, yeah. don't do it. Do not add it in there. Yeah. And yeah, then, Daytona's uh, right. Have those business cards ready, man. Have them ready. And I'll tell you what, I had <laughs> I had the ride of a lifetime, too. Freaking, I uh, had these two Chinese ladies book a ride to the airport. Three big suitcases full <laughs> two yeah. carry-ons and a freaking uh comforter in a plastic bag build my little freaking thing up well i got a phone call from tomorrow i gotta let you guys go okay cool cool get we'll see you brother i think i got you on there jamil wait a minute okay there you go jamil your, your sound is off now your sound is off, Jamil. <laughs> so the Chinese people always got a lot of baggage. Yeah, I can't hear your, your sound on there, man. Wait a minute. Uh-oh, Jamil, something's happening with Jamil's. Man, man, man. Hey, all right. Uh, who is that up in there? Yeah, nice boys Wednesday. Hey, I, I see you, brother. I see you. Yeah, man. Like I said, we we all out wearing these shirts, and it it's most of the gear I do is conversation starters. People want to know what it means, especially when I walk into the gym. They they see Mic Drop Podcast on it every time I walk in the gym. They're like, what's Mic Drop Podcast? Oh, that's a podcast. We know I can hear you now, brother. I can hear you now. You can hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah. Good. Sorry about that. Are I don't know good? what happened. Yeah, man. Sometimes shit glitches like that. <laughs> Motherfucker said you got them Obama phones. <laughs> <laughs> they told him fucking with you. <laughs> See, look, he says, I can't hear you. What? What happened? I can't hear you though. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. I don't know how what happened. This is they told us he's got them Obama phones. I'm gonna I'm gonna do like this. All right, let's do like that. Something's happening with it, man. What happened? We made them numbers for black, and they were paying 300 a day for 80K for the whole year. Commercial insurance because they work six days a week. Man, 300 a day from black. All right, cool, Rod Flow. So it's just it's just the Obama phone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, Dems, that's what I'm saying. And I, I still wear that. Because I tell people like this, that February the 14th shirt, that's historic. That was the first major protest that I think went worldwide, went global, that all of the news media agencies, like I said, we were on CNN, Business Insider. It was everywhere. That shirt is is your marketplace in history. Where were you February the 14th, 2024? Were you being a pigeon or you pushing this shit forward? When I wear that shirt, that's the way I look at it. I was one of those that were pushing it forward. And I'm sitting there trying to get people to understand that the protest is the is the vocal uh uh is it link to get the membership oh uh, he just in like uh it's inside of my uh descriptions of videos and stuff like that it's under some other videos too I'm but bad. yeah i was telling now i can hear you now yeah okay. but i'm telling people with that february the 14th protest it was it it's about getting the message out about progress that we plan on making it was putting one foot in the door and it was a big step we took a big step into a door of corporate america now we got them re-looking at fares we got them looking at surge we got them looking at commercial insurance we got them looking at private rides now we got everybody's eyes open private deliveries we took a step into a door 
And once we stepped in, there is no going back. Now on March, on April the 1st, April Fools, we taking that second step into the door. We're going to be inside of the house. And once we're in a house, at some some point, we're going to come to that damn kitchen table and we're going to sit at that kitchen table. But we're going to keep taking a step forward. Every protest, we're taking a step forward. We're being heard. And the apps, like people say, the apps don't care about y'all. They ain't listening to y'all. Look at your bank account every month. That is your gauge on what's going on. Don't worry about the apps. Worry about your money. That's how you know if these protests work or not. Every, well, I don't hear Dara talking about you. I don't hear David talking about you. Look at your bank account. Trust me, when you're doing private rides, when you when they happen to pay your ass super surge and give you bigger bonuses and bigger quests to do rides on these apps, that's when you know this shit's working. They ain't going to tell you if you in a, a boxing ring with somebody, they ain't going to ever tell you, hey, man, that punch just hurt me last round, man. Don't hit me there again, man. That shit hurt me. They ain't going to tell you that. So, no, they will never tell you what's working. You have to know what's working by paying attention to what's going on. You have to sit up and go, you know what? We know what's working. Why? Because look at my bank account. I ain't never had a quest like this. I ain't never seen surges like this in my area at this time of the daytime. They never, you know, just shot me $700. Like the other day, they gave all the EV people $500, $700. They ain't never been getting big chunks like that thrown at them. The protests are working. They seeing we're waking up to a lot of the shit that's going on. So when you look at your bank account and it's going up and not down, oh, you can thank motherfuckers for that because a lot of people ain't speaking on it. You know, most people are, are starting to get an eye on it. And I don't know, I, I sent you an email earlier today. It's in regards to making sure that we all talk to customers, get two customers a day. From two customers a day, that's, uh, you know, you figure it out two times five days a week that you work, that's what, 10 customers, 10 yep. times four, it's 40, 40 times 12. That Those are your private rights. That's your future, guys. You that sitting is your dollars. future. 480 bucks like that. You just did 480. Those calcs went up to 480 fast as hell. And 480, that'll cover your car insurance. Private rides. And now you're like, damn, I got my car insurance. It'll cover your car note. You might say, hey, man, it covered my car note. That 480 covered my note. Money that you would have never got. The, like I said, look at opportunity costs. These apps got people so focused on fucking popcorn. Look at the opportunity cost. What could you make? Don't look at well. It only cost me thirteen cents a mile in fuel, and it cost me you know eleven cents Forget for that. no. Yeah, it's it's pennies. They got you looking at popcorn. How much can you make at the concert? Oh, I can make three hundred. How I could do this, this, and this. Don't look well. Since it only cost me thirteen cents a mile, as long as I'm making twenty six cents, I'm doubling my money. No, That's fuck that. Stupid. Yeah, exactly. Dumb shit. Look at the opportunity cost. What can you make? And if they ain't paying you, turn that app off, take your ass home, start another business. Your business might be photography. I had somebody today in my comments, she does uh, surveys. She makes about $175 like every hour and a half or something like that doing surveys online. So I'm going to sit down and chat with her and try to bring her on a live stream so she can explain how she's getting all these surveys. So if a driver ain't doing shit anyways for the next hour and a half, you sit in the parking lot doing nothing, do a survey. It's surveys and Zoom calls. So I'm going to get her on a live stream to show drivers because I want these apps to say these motherfuckers are making money because we ain't paying them. Now you got to pay us now. You're going to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> show me the money. E exactly. <laughs> show me the money. Goddamn. And that's the thing. And if they don't want to pay us, we're going to go do other shit. And now you're going to be stuck with all these pictures out there wrecking their cars complaining because what they going to end up doing? Wrecking a car, not having $2,500 deductible, renting from Hertz and Uber, getting money taken out of their account when they ain't they fucking sleeping. Where did Hertz take another $1,100 market? I mean, these, these are the people who they're going to be dealing with. A bunch of disgruntled, upset ass pigeons. And we're going to be like, we're making good money right now doing because we all said this is how you got to do it, y'all. We're entrepreneurs, but we ain't just drivers. We're entrepreneurs. That becomes before a driver. You being a driver is part of you being an entrepreneur. Anytime so you can, you're an independent contractor, you are an entrepreneur. Anytime yeah. you did work for yourself, you are an entrepreneur. Yep, yep. And a lot of people don't see it like that because they're from W-2 backgrounds. Like I said, just like Etherman said, we are indoctrinated. It takes a lot of, of reverse engineering to undoctrinate somebody who's been indoctrinated. To unindoctrinate somebody, you've got to teach them the value of who they are as a person. 
You got to teach them. This is not you. They got to go through damn near therapy and counseling and shit to break those habits. Well, they're not going to pay me. I mean, I used to sit and laugh at people on YouTube. It, it wasn't really funny shit. But to me as an accountant, it would I would laugh because they'd be like, yeah, man, I'm getting a 50 cent an hour raise. And I'd be like, these value, these motherfuckers value two more quarters more this hour than, than they did yesterday. Two more quarters. I'm like, dude, it's a homeless motherfucker at Circle K right now getting $5 extra per hour right now. It's a homeless motherfucker getting an extra $5 per hour by changing up his scheme a little bit. Those homeless motherfuckers are entrepreneurs. They sit, they walk around three, four hundred in their pocket at any given time. They change yes. their shit up all the time. Yes. And I'm sitting there like, I'm sitting there like, you happy over two quarters. Motherfucker gave you two quarters. Oh, I got 50 cent an hour raise, man. I can't. And I'm like, bro, you indoctrinated. When I leave my house, I want an extra $50 an hour. I want an extra, you know, 25 an hour, not 25 cent, $25 per hour. And so when you indoctrinate somebody to make them think 50 cents more per hour, your value went up by 50 cent more per hour. There's 2,080 hours in a normal business year, 2,080 hours, because we know that shit because we did HR work. So therefore, from last year to this year, you said your value only went up by $1,040. That's all you're at 50 cent an hour. It went up by $1,040. Your value from last year, all the experience and all the shit you know, all the shit, the time and opportunity you're giving this company, you're willing to sell your soul to this company again. And all they're saying is we're going to give you an extra thousand dollars this year. And I'm like, no, fuck that. You're not giving me no extra grand. It's like, you're going to give me what I came for. You're giving me my money. Shit. If I, if I said, oh, Dems is coming in the building, let's see what Dems is on today. Hey. What's up, Miss Dems Dallas? What's good? What's good? What's good, What's good everybody? How are nope. you? That's hey. Dems Dallas. Hey, That's how's it going right. down there in that, that SUV life? Hey, it is what it is. Get money. Oh yeah, I'm telling you, shoot, y'all doing it. I've been looking at a, a 2017 Acura MDX is what I'm looking at now. So I've got a few of them on deck. I started looking at like car gurus and stuff like that. 2014 is when the Uber, the uh, Lyft Black and all of that starts. So Lyft Black go back to a 2014. So I said, well, let me get a 17. So I got at least two, three years if they don't change that shit. <laughs> and so. And then it's the third row. For that. So even yeah. when I do private rides now, now I can do bachelor parties, bachelorette parties. I could do, you know, yeah. five people and stuff like instead of like only three and four, I can go up five, six, maybe. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking to upgrade. I'm looking to upgrade. I'm looking at this yeah. Acura MDX. This what you are going to do. You definitely have to invest in yourself. That's my, I, I just can't stress it enough. If this is what you're going to do, you have to open up your options, take yourself out the box. Yep. And make yourself available for all ride types. Bottom line, point blank. Yep. I yep. mean, I I jump between the app wherever the money's at. If I'm on a high surge, I'll drop it to a standard real quick because I'm gonna pop that twenty five. I put five with it. I just made thirty on a on a five mile ride. That's it. Smart. That's, you see that's, smart what do. Yeah. that's what having the black platform helps you out to to go from from the top to the bottom. And you, exactly. you, gotta, you gotta play with it. You just yeah. play, I play it like a game. The same way they play me like a game, I'm gonna play them back like a That's game. Right. Yep. That's yep. right. Yep. Exactly. But the one it. thing, one thing I have to remember, you guys gotta remember, keep keep track of any of the rights that you take from X to uh, comfort because they are charging us. They are charging us double the amount on on the uh commercial insurance because if you have it and i have it that means that they're they're trying to put it on on top of us and yep. then they're gonna charge us yep and you know at some point like i said just like when they got from 2014 to 2017 that settlement they did in new york about that those amounts they were charging drivers for stuff like that and they finally that 328 million they finally said okay we're gonna pay you guys back the 328 million I think it's going to go just nationwide, maybe worldwide, with how they're doing with this insurance shit. At some point, they're going to end up being caught in it, and they're going to have to settle for it because they're double charging. People are being double covered for situations where we should be able to opt out of that $2,500 deductible. We shouldn't have to deal with a $2,500 deductible if we don't want to. You can't force us to do that. Nobody can force you. you you're going to pay this $2,500 deductible. What if I want to pay a cheaper one? 
Well, if you want to pay a cheaper one, go get a cheaper one. Okay, then I'm opting out of yours, and I'm gonna give me a cheaper one then. People exactly. should have that right. Yep. Exactly. But the 100%. thing about it, you have commercial coverage, and you get into an accident. You have to file it with your insurance company first before you even pursue the Uber Lyft insurance. But if I got commercial insurance, then at the end of the day, my insurance is covering everything. So what the hell am I paying? Exactly. 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 Yes. And that's I what need it is. them to run me all my coin back. Yep. And you know that it's going to happen. There are going to be some, some settlements coming out of this whole ordeal. And I'm glad a lot of the ride share channels are now starting to discuss insurance the extortion the bullshit people are really talking about it now so many people say, i don't want uber to say this and deactivate me i don't want lift to deactivate i don't want to i'm like fuck them speak the yeah. truth <laughs> you are the first one to bring it up because i'm gonna tell you if it wasn't because you kept on saying we have insurance we have insurance we have insurance no no one would have opened their eyes up to really yeah. di dig into it because because I like I tell motherfuckers when I when I wear those shirts and and Craig got one of those too. It says I represent the chat because I'm somebody in the fucking chats. When I'm on these live streams of other people channels, they don't represent the chat. We're in the chat having great conversations, great questions, great comments. Luckily, I have a channel to where I can bring up the actual shit that the chat talks about to the forefront that most of these channels are scared to talk about. Well, I don't want to talk about that because Uber might not like that. Fuck Uber. They don't like me. They're stealing Go from ahead. me. They don't like me. <laughs> It's so business. I tell motherfuckers, I'm one of the only channels that actually represents the chat. I represent the chat. Motherfucker, if you want to know what the chat is on, come over to this channel because this is what the chat talks about over here. Yeah. And a lot of channels won't do that. They won't do that. Oh, no, we got our agenda. We talk about what we have on schedule. Motherfucker, this is no script. Straight from the hip. We shoot over here. <laughs> 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 Shit, we do it over here. We don't fuck around. We do it over here. And if you don't like how we do it, it's cool. We are, we're a cool channel. We say, well, go about your business. We don't need you over here. We're about energy. We're about getting this money. I want everybody to fucking wake up one day and be like, man, I cannot believe after this month I paid all my bills. I ain't never had an extra 800 just sitting there, dude. This shit's crazy. Like, oh, man, I just paid. I got an extra three Gs after four months. It's just sitting there, man. What am I doing? You doing something right now. This is how it should have always been. But it's, yes. if you always settle for people taking money from you, they will keep taking it from you. These rental car companies taking it from you. And I, like I was telling um, my man Logan, what I would love to do is to go out and buy older model cars, like the entry level. Car, like, let's say they start at 2007 is what most of these Uber cars talk about, because I look at it. So I'm going through Craigslist. I'm looking at everything 2009 to current. Now, if I find a car for, let's say, two grand, it's a 2009. You know, 150,000 miles. I'll buy it for two grand, service that motherfucker top to bottom, up and down, get it all fixed. And I want to sell that car for whatever I invested plus some for my time to a ride share driver that has a rental car. Get out of that fucking rental car. This is your car now. I know the car is good because I did all the work to it. So it's got a good fuel pump, good spark plugs, good brakes. Everything on this car is good now. Get out of that fucking rental car. Well, Jeff, I ain't got no money, man. You know what? Take that fucking car back. Take this car right now. Drive this shit for two weeks. Start paying me back. You ain't no dealership, Jeff. I ain't say I was a fucking dealership. If you pay me back for this fucking car, it's yours. The moment you finish paying, I'll give you the title to this motherfucker. And that's how I want to do it, man. I want to help people get out of these fucking poverty traps. If we don't yeah. start helping each other out and pitching for each other, and that's just a side business I want to run, is buying cars offline, replacing transmissions, doing all this shit myself. Getting people out of these two thousand because if two thousand dollars a month is what you're gonna pay for a rental car for 12 months, that's twenty-four thousand dollars. If I sell you a car for six six grand, guess what? Three months later, you're done. So your money is yours for eternity now. You own the fucking car, it's yours now. You never had to run credit and have to do no credit shit. And that's how we help each other out. We try Imagine to pull each other this, up in the though. ways we can. Imagine this: the first five hundred dollars on that Monday that you are working for, which may take you two days to pay for that fucking rental, okay? Two Is days. It? And then the rest of it, you have to work your ass off. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah. to work yeah. your ass off just so you can make another $1,500. And if you and let's say you had dollars. let's say you had 30 good rides that week, like or 30 good rides during a period where you should have did like 50. All you got is 30 good rides. The rest are all shit rides. You're throwing money away. You have to do loss rides just to keep a job. You have to take a loss just to keep a job. It's like you're not being an entrepreneur then. You're not being a, a contractor now.
No, really? you're being just like these dumb it, motherfuckers. It, it's now. a W two format. <laughs> it's a way to keep someone down and not yep. be able to to go uh, free from from their advantage to do things. Yep, exactly. It's a poverty trap. Like I tell everybody, it's plantation economics. It's poverty trap. We got to start having these words circulating the ride share community because once you start educating riders on this shit, riders are going to say, well, how can I help you get off the plantation? Well, you can give me 50 because all I'm getting out of this ride is 24 and you paid 76. Just give me 50. You can help me off the plantation. Bet. Yeah. And you keep doing that shit over and over. Now they're freeing us. We're freeing them from being under the grips of being gouged all the fucking time. And they're freeing us from being cut short. We're all helping each other off the fucking plantation called Uber and Lyft. And even with, like I said, with that Tony Delivers guy, he's telling people, say, hey, you know what? I'll charge you this much for deliveries. That's it. So all these other prices you guys are paying, you're getting gouged and I ain't getting paid shit anyways. So everybody has to pitch in. And even when Pedro then was doing the, the gig conference and all that stuff, I was always saying, if you don't get writers and customers and all these people involved in your gig conference, you're missing a major part of the economy. Because he only wanted to do like he wanted to do like YouTubers and drivers. I'm like, no, you can't do that, man. I said, you got to go grab riders. You got to get people from McDonald's, get people from fucking Walmart. Everybody has to be there. It's a conference about the gig space. We're all a part of the gig space. You can't leave out the, the revenue part and just deal with us as drivers. Like, nah, you got to have everybody fucking show up. Invite them all. And the yeah. fact is, the fact still remains. Without you, without her, without me, without anybody around here, all of us uh, mm -hmm. as drivers, professional, and let's let's call ourselves professional drivers, please, because yeah. you are a professional. That's what we are. Okay. Hey. Yep. So, yep. So let, let, every single professional driver out there takes their hands into their own mind and they say, "Okay, you know what? We are not going to work for this." for this uh, uh, this this group of people that are treating us treating us like slaves i mean yeah. they are totally treating us like slaves and if yeah. we do it by ourselves and we go out there each one of us becomes a, a, an area of ex expertise i have i have the expertise to go into the uh, airport pick people up at the uh, hotels there you go. There's there's your expertise, and then you start creating your own uh, clientele, getting yep. 25 35 45 50 dollars a ride. Can you imagine if everybody did that, and yep. and that money is not going to the app? And I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because we got this ABC two one two three love said. I don't think protest is going to work, but it's a minor inconvenience for everyone. What we should do is get state and city reps uh, for change, uh, laws to change. I'm glad you said what you said, and I'm glad because those are conflicting things. I think the protests are currently working. For one, I don't know if ABC doesn't know or not, but I'm going to tell you the definition of a protest. A protest is to bring up a topic of discussion, to put it on the forefront of a table, to get everybody aware of it. That's what a protest is. The fact that you're even talking about it on my live stream shows that the protest is working. That shows it's working. Now, what do you want it to work for is the other end of it. Do you, We want it to work for better pay. So how do we protest? We turn the app loss and do private rides. Are private rides paying better than the apps right now? 100%. Yes. Therefore, it works. So protesting works. So ABC doesn't realize that a private ride, you get paid more than driving on the app. ABC doesn't know that. But we're educating ABC right now. So Great. we're letting you know. When you do a private ride, you're protesting what the apps are paying you. It's a protest. It's an actual protest. I don't think ABC knows what a protest is, so we're explaining to you what it is. You're going to do a private ride. Now you're making 50 instead of 19, 20, 25. Does that work for you to have $50 instead of 25? Does it work for you? I think it works. So therefore, the protest works. works. So, But like I said, I don't think ABC understands what a protest is. And to say, I want the government involved. The government don't need to be involved. No, I can no. talk straight to a writer. I can talk straight to a writer without the senator fucking standing right there. I could talk straight yeah. to a writer without the congressman standing right there. I tell the writer, hey, man, $85 for this ride. If Uber and Lyft want to be a part of that transaction, then sit down at the table with me and say, Jeff, let us be a part of this transaction, man, because you're stealing the shit out of our passengers right now. You're taking us down, dude. What are you doing? You got all these motherfuckers out there taking money from us right now, Jeff. What? So the protest is working. Jeff, right. you know what you just brought up that talking to the customers all the time, 
You know, yeah. there's drivers out there that have probably picked up Carrie Lake pick, uh, at uh, Camelback and taken her home from vacations. You don't think that we could probably talk to her? And oh, get hell things yeah. moving? You don't think that, it, yeah, Soto, the guy from ABC News, I, which I picked up out in North Phoenix and I brought yeah. him to the airport. You don't think that we could have brought this up and bring the, the fact of how things are being run by Uber against us? Yep, exactly. 25. Yep. You know, and that see, and that's the thing. Just mentioning it to, to the media, the media mentioned you, you're telling me people who are in the Senate, the Congress, the House of Reps, you don't think they watch? Oh, they watch the news. All these motherfuckers here, what we talking about the protest work. These people didn't just turn the TV off when they talked about the Valentine's Day protest. They didn't just turn. No, they heard, they saw, they saw all the commotion. <laughs> they heard, they reading shit. These motherfuckers, they, they not saying nothing. Because a lot of people right now, Uber is in the pockets of a lot of politicians right now. Uber is yeah. paying a lot of people to do what they do and get away. They got Tony West from the Justice Department. He's one of the biggest people in government. They got him from the Justice Department working at Uber headquarters. So you telling me the government the government don't know what the fuck is going on in Rideshare? The oh, government works in sure Rideshare. They, they know sure what's do. going on. They hear us. They see us coming. But a lot of people who are drivers and think that they're drivers because they don't see outside of the world of being a driver. We live on planet fucking Earth. This shit's expansive. You've got to watch news. You've got to watch TV. You've got to understand stocks, finance. If this is the shit you win, you got to envelop yourself in it. Don't just be a driver. No, be bigger than that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Mix. Appreciate Ms. that. Michael's comment about them doing that buyback. I came across an article uh today actually um regarding that buyback and they were saying that uh uber ceo did the buyback in order to boost up that quarterly sales for his um his his bonus yeah yeah it's, and I'm going to read Meg's comment real quick. Says, the goal of the protest is to gain momentum by getting the media involved to spread our message to the masses. It's a necessary mechanism to gain traction and spread awareness. And to piggyback that on what you were saying, Dems, when I did the, the video talking about why, because I said, did the protest backfire? That was my thumbnail. Say said, protest backfires? And I had laughing faces on it because a lot of people said, oh, the protest backfired. The stock went up. And I explained to them why the stock went up. I said the stock didn't go up because of the protest. The stock went up because of the seven billion dollar buyback that Uber has never done in the history of the fucking company. That's why it went up. And why do you do that? You take stock out of circulation. It's like like and I had to explain it to people. I said, let's say I got one one share of stock and my company's worth a thousand dollars. That means this is worth one thousand dollars. Now, let's say I got two shares of stocks. The company's still worth a thousand, but now each sale, each stock is worth 500, 500. The value of the company never changes. The value of the stock went down because I put more out. Now I got three shares of stock. The company is still a thousand dollars, 333 each. Now the value keeps going down the more shares I put out there. So let's say I want to buy back two shares. I only have one share outstanding now. The company's still worth a thousand dollars, but this stock is now worth a thousand. So it arbitrarily showed you that because the stock went up. You think the value of the company went up? No, I just took other shares off the fucking floor now. So I'm back to $1,000 a share. I'm not at 333 a share no more because I bought back the two other shares. That's the shit. Uber. It's a card trick. All accountants know that. It's a card trick. You know, that card trick was done by the help of us professional drivers. We made yep. them the money so they can go buy it back. That's yep, the yep, bottom yep. line. We made them that kind of money. A company that was losing money the first quarter of 2023, in the second, third, and fourth quarter, they have record record uh, earnings. But what? How does that happen? How does that happen? On our backs. That's how it happens. Thank on our backs. You. Thank you. And if we can go out there and generate these same rides, saving people money. So we're saving. I think I think I can hear somebody's phone like in the background. I think that's yours, Dems. I think I hear your phone. My phone. Uh... Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Because I think it's echoing back into my ears. Yeah. And so yeah, now I now it's gone. Yeah. And so I was telling people if, if we can go out and generate the savings for these for the rioters, if we can generate savings for them, and we can make more money through generating them savings, then the app is what's costing everybody too much. 
It's costing us our money and it's costing riders their money. We just got to come together and talk about it. Say, hey, y'all, the reason why y'all going broke and why we ain't making no fucking money is because of these apps are in the way. This travel agency is selling thousand dollar cruise tickets for two hundred and fifty dollar cruises. So you can't sell somebody a thousand dollar cruise ticket. The cruise only costs 250 bucks. If I tell you how much is the cruise, you have 250. Well, I just paid a thousand for this motherfucker. Who'd you pay? Uber? It's like, oh, you got played then. I'm not getting no tip and no nothing out of that. Cause I you just overpaid for it now. Yeah, they're using the same concept as they did that as Dara did in the previous company. You know, get yeah. sell, sell uh, aviation tickets uh, at uh, whatever price, and they can make the profit off of it. Yep, yep. And I'm and like I said, he comes. There comes from Expedia.com. That's where he comes from. Yes, so, that's it. Yeah, so he's one of those people that have this this mentality of we're nothing to these people. They look at their app and their technology as being their business. We ain't shit. We're just a way for them to conduct their business. Our business, our little small independent business we got don't mean shit to none of them. It means nothing to none of them. Yeah, they don't have anything invested. What do they have investment on? It's just the technology, the name technology. That's all their investments. Who has the car? You do, Jeff. You do. I yeah. do. Everybody does. And then all we can of also us have a car. Yeah. That's the investment out there. And then we can also, like you said, we can go get our own insurance. We don't need to buy this because they're selling us, marketing us products that we don't need. They're selling us a high cost insurance that we don't want that doesn't benefit us or anything like that. So at twenty five hundred dollar deductible, how is that going to benefit the average person? Do you think everybody has twenty five hundred dollars in their back pocket to give out as a deduct deductible? And then they're going to say the we're being paid. They're going to then come back to you and say, oh, hold on a second. This is not the way it is. Uh, we, we can't cover you because uh, uh, you were on time A or B and it wasn't C or whatever the hell that they try to do to try to manipulate us. Exactly. It's and see, and, and, now, and, and ABC comes back saying, you know, capitalism. Capitalism is cool, but you got to realize we're also a part of capitalism, too. I'm a capitalist. <laughs> I'm exactly. an independent so, contractor, a self-employed person. That's, that's a it. capitalist. So we're capitalists. We should be able to go out and negotiate our profit margins and do our things too. Therefore, to say capitalism, but they tell us what to do. That's called feudalism. Feudalism is where serfdom took place. You have landlords and shit at the top telling all the serfs what to do. So capitalism is where everybody has a say and everybody negotiates their value and everybody fights for profits. Feudalism is where you have lords over people, right? Amen. Uber and Lyft are the lords over people. Amen. Telling people, telling people, well, you got to abide by this and you got to do that. That's not capitalism. Capitalism is me saying, hey, Uber, you charging this person 100. This person's willing to give me 80 because you're trying to pay me 39. So let this person make a decision. Letting that rider make a decision on transparency and what's really going on. That's where capitalism takes place. When you start hiding facts. You ain't capitalism. Now you're back at feudalism again. You're oh back my at God, landlords. You just said something very important that everybody needs to understand. Transparency. You just said it. That's what we need. Yeah. We and definitely that's need transparency. Yep. And, uh, and a lot of people, they don't understand that, you know, to do legit business and you got business partners, we used to be called driving partners. It's funny that Darren now calls us earners. They don't call us driving <laughs> partners no more. They call us earners now. Earners. We're earning yes. all the money for these motherfuckers to live the lives they live. We're earners. All Jeff's are earners. We got all these new earners coming online. We're not driving partners. You'll never hear them say, we're our driving partners. Go look through all they shit. They'll never call us a driving partner. Because we earn all the money, the trillions of dollars required to run this whole enterprise. We're the ones earning it. That app is not earning it. That app is facilitating us being used as slaves. That's all it's doing. Just like the Matrix, when you plug in all these brains and shit, the, the people who are plugged into the Matrix are actually making the Matrix operate the way it does. When you plug us in as drivers, you're making this whole Uber and Lyft system operate the way it does. When we unplug ourselves and say, fuck that, we the 300, we coming for our money. Now the Matrix is not running right now. Something is screwed up with the Matrix. And they're like, oh shit, 
we, we don't know what to do, man. Say like, these drivers are all dropping off. They're doing private rides now. Oh, we'll send out a memo showing everybody taking rides off app is against the terms of service. Well, still in our fucking tips is against the terms of service too. Under yes, they do it anyway. Exactly. But they yet, do it anyway. Yeah, but they don't want to call us, you know, what we truly are, which are, you know, entrepreneurs, independent contractors. They want to treat us like W-2 employees by, by controlling us, not letting us be the entrepreneurs we are. That's why I wear this fucking gear out. That's why we go. We talk to riders. We talk to drivers. We talk to everybody. We remind them, you are an entrepreneur. Capitalism is in your favor, too. Not just well, in their you favor. It's in your it, favor, it, it, too. And if we are independent, true independent contractors, they should yep. not be trying to tell us how many rides we need to pick up in an hour, how many, uh, how many in a week, how many in a month, what our acceptance rates or cancellation rates. That is that is W two mentality. Yep, that's people W2 need mentality. to understand that. Please yep. understand that you are not an employee, guys. I'm already on it, Etherman. I was about to say, so that's why I put it up there, Jim. <laughs> Open the blockchain. I'm watch the on it. Hey, and, and, I never, and I'm glad you said it and I didn't because I've told everybody I have seen the app already. I said it on my last live stream. I've seen the app work. I see, I've see. i seen the back end, how it works. The blockchain roster application is on the fucking way. Trust me. I didn't want to say it, so I'm glad you said it. <laughs> I, I had to zoom in on it. Hold on. Yeah, no, 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 I'm already on it, baby. To see that. I want you to see that. That's why I put that shit up there. A lot of people don't understand. They're scared of crypto. They're scared of blockchain. These motherfuckers are scared of people having the power to say what value is. When we do crypto, we say like what Shiba Inu went up like 30% the other day. Dogecoin jumped like 24% the other day. We sit there and we tell people if we run blockchain, it's all the people in this world. If we run crypto, it's all the people in this world. We take out the big banks. We take out, you know, fiat currency. We take out what they say is valuable and we make it valuable. They don't want blockchain. Blockchain is, is outside of the matrix of what they can control. Blockchain is worldwide. Blockchain is, is universal. Blockchain will fuck up everything any of these powerful people ever did. They all become broke and we all become rich. They don't want that shit to happen. That's why they don't mess with no blockchain now. Do you know? Do you realize that now he realized Dara said, "Oh, we're not treating our our, our we're not paying attention to our drivers." What does yeah. that mean to you? Yeah. What does that really mean to you as a driver? Remember, you that guys mean are cut all the professional check. drivers. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Cut the check, bitch. That's right. <laughs> You're going to pay me. Pay me. Rub me my, run me my coin. That's what that means. <laughs> I mean, they're going to sit up there and give all these immigrants all this fucking money. But here we are, hardworking Americans. You Y'all running around trying to fucking tax us for everything. Make us abide by all these stipulations. But give our money away to people from other fucking countries that don't even know shit about this country. This shit Amen. makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. So this has to be orchestrated as a psychological bit of warfare. It's almost like, and like I said, all right, shit's going to get real. Y'all know when I say that, shit's about to go downhill real fucking fast. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe, honestly, I think this, the administration we currently got right now is, is pushing, pushing, like feverishly pushing for this country to go into civil war mode. And I'm going to tell you why they keep pushing the January the 6th agenda because they want to put that in front of your head. January the 6th, January the 6th. But I'm going to tell you something about January the 6th. I saw a bunch of motherfuckers with backpacks. I ain't never seen people with backpacks overtake a country. I've never seen people overthrow a country with backpacks. We got people coming through the Darien Gap and everything wearing backpacks and shit like that. But yet they're taking over our country because we're giving them free shit, giving them money, giving them everything. They didn't give January the 6th people no free money. They didn't give them nothing for free. And they had the same backpacks. So while we got these motherfuckers with backpacks come, you give them all of our shit, give them free house and free hotels, free everything. But yet we got the people who in America, they got backpacks invading some. And you say, oh, well, they're they're terrorists. They're invading this insurrection. And, and, and beating our police officers. This is the biggest uh, insurrection on. we've seen. If you beat up a police officer or I beat up a police oh, officer, I'll get what's going to happen? Well, jail, buddy. Exactly. Yeah, man, no, first you went to the hospital. If you had come to a bed, then you go to jail. But have you have anybody to this day has anybody heard of any illegal immigrant being shot by a police officer? No, because those are soldiers. If we shoot one of these illegal immigrants, we're shooting a soldier. These illegal immigrants—that is the indication of war. 
If you shoot one of these illegal immigrants, you have now started war with another country by killing their citizens who are soldiers on our soil. You will never see an illegal immigrant get shot by a cop. I put that shit on everything. They'll shoot me before they shoot one of them. Guaranteed. Because they don't want to stop a world war. If these people come over here and they get shot, I told you this shit was going to get real. They shoot one of these motherfuckers over here. <laughs> oh, trust me. We're going to have military dropping bombs on this bitch. We're going to have Air Force bombs this month because we killing their people on our soil. Imagine Americans being killed in another country right now. Imagine Americans being killed over in Iraq. Oh, we, gonna, we could declare war real quick. What just happened over in Palestine? When you saw them Americans being killed over there, what? Oh, America jumped on that shit real quick. So you don't think they're going to do the same shit over here. If we kill an illegal immigrant, they beating up our police officers. They robbing our stores. They yanking purses. These motherfuckers are being handcuffed and released the next day. You cannot start a war by doing anything against these illegal immigrants on our soil. And the Biden administration made sure of that shit. They started a war on our soil with our hands tied behind our fucking back. That's what they did. And I, like I told you, this motherfucker's going to get real. I have a lot of discussions off camera. And I talk to motherfuckers like this all the time. <laughs> I know my channel gonna get fucking block banned and all that shit. <laughs> block banned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> block banned. You two gonna get rid of my ass quick as because oh shit, he done kept it too real. Get rid of him. He's like fuck that. And that's why. That's why I because I, I know how passionate I am about my position. And I was kind of talking about immigrants for a while. I left that shit alone because motherfuckers ain't ready for that conversation yet. But I'm like. You tell me out of all the shit, the, the millions and millions of immigrants we got in this country right now, how many? I mean, they're killing college students. They're killing fucking homeowners. They're right. How many of those motherfuckers have been shot by a police officer? Zero. Not a now. Shoot one. You have now you've declared war on another fucking country. These are soldiers on our soil right now. I'm telling you, man, the shit's right in our fucking faces. It is. They just ain't coming to the cliff with the foolishness. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, that's it, it man. But let's, <laughs> let's get ourselves back to the curb. What we need to do on April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh man, April, oh April Fool's gonna be funny. It's going down. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a couple of live streams, but I'm going out. I'm I'm doing cash rides. I'm gonna go out and do some cash rides on April Fools, man. Because all these motherfuckers that oh man, I made so much money on on you know February the fourteenth. Thank you guys for protesting. I told you motherfuckers y'all could thank us because you will never make nine hundred dollars on a regular day like that ever again. Ever. Ever. Maybe on April 1st when we protesting again. Exactly, exactly. But did you notice that did you notice that these people that that uh that did get nine hundred dollars uh in a day, the next day they, they were all getting a hundred, hundred and twenty-five bucks. <laughs> exactly. They was crying. Yep. They yep. was crying by the end of the week, they was crying. Yep. That's yep. Right. They, it didn't change nothing. Y'all was out there protesting. It didn't change nothing. I'm still not getting paid nothing. Because you didn't stand up with us. Man. Don't be mad. We tried to tell you. Now, and the funny thing is that all of us who have been doing cash rides and smart driving, I mean, I've been using a lot more money even to cover bills and shit like that with all my private ride money. So therefore, my ride share money ain't even being touched right now. If I'm doing ride shares like shit, my ride share money's sitting there. Private rides is all, like I said, I don't even put this shit on my channel. I tell I tell everybody, keep a safe in your fucking house. If you're going to be doing private rides, keep a safe in your house because the shit's going to get crazy. I'll be at the gas station. Man, we be chatting, talking, laughing shit. My man Chad be like, dude, I can even shut my motherfucking wallet yesterday. I'm like, I know it, man. People don't want to pay these fucking apps. They don't. They want to pay us. They want to ride in this clean fucking car they see sitting right here. Let the windows down. They can smell a motherfucker for breeze coming up that motherfucker. They're like, man, this car is clean, man. Oh, yeah, this motherfucker. Gonna... Oh, shit. Hell, $80 here. Let's ride. Let's ride. They, 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 hey, they, they, people don't understand how we accept rights that pay us $25, and yet the app is making $79 or $85. Exactly. They don't understand. They, they think, and every single rider that I have talked to, that I've gotten a good, uh, I, what I thought it was a good fair amount. When they mm -hmm. find out what they're paying me, they go, whoa, you know what? Uh, give me your business card. Next time I'm in town, I'm gonna get, uh, call you. And because every rider out there better have five drivers. They're realizing that they're man manipulating all of us drivers. Yep. They're getting us addicted to the drug of an app. 
Yep. Yep. It, it's psychological, man. It, like I said, it's like sitting in front of a slot machine. That's, that's all it is. People sit in front of a slot machine for hours on end, hours on end. And it's like, it's the addiction of, is this next one going to hit? Is this next one going to hit? Is this that? And it comes real close to a cherry. Oh, shit, I almost had a cherry, man. Is the next one going to hit? Is that? Oh, shit, I had a seven. And it's just like that. Oh, man, is my next ride going to be a banger? Is it going to be a banger? And it's like a shit ride. And it's like, oh, well, I'm going to go to this area, see if it's good. Oh, it's another shit ride. Oh, then you finally get a good ride after four shit rides. It's like, oh, man, I got a banger. Let's see if I can get another one. It's a drug, man. It's, it's like a casino. And they know it. They're not stupid. They know it. But the only thing is, this is a very expensive casino. Because yeah, it's we're paying $30,000 a year in insurance out of our pocket to these people. We're earners for them. We're earning the money so they can pay all their bills. We ain't earning the shit to pay ours, though. That's We're where depreciating back. our first-class cars that we have out there. You have a BMW. I have a Lincoln. She has a... a, a the BMW. You, you got the big BMW. X7. X6, yeah. X7. What do you got? I got the Lincoln Navigator. Yeah. Damn, she got like an X6 or an X7, I think. Seven. 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 Big one. The big one. Seven. Big there boy. you go. And, and you think they care the moment that you have an issue with your engine, with your uh, brakes, or anything else? They're going to say, you know what? Let me send you some money because you are a great earner. Let me give you some money for, for yeah. to, to fix your car. Never, never, Bullshit. never. They're gonna tell you. They're gonna tell you to call Hertz. Call Hertz and rent a car so you're not beating up your car. Sure. Oh, yeah. So it's we like, can become. We can be the next slave uh, 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 in the line. Exactly. Exactly. On. And I'm gonna jump right in the other one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I said, somebody, somebody was saying, "Hey, man, thank God I'm addicted to cash." I tell people when you walk in a casino, there's a reason why they got penny slots, and there's a reason why they got the high limit area. Penny slots are the people that are addicted to money. Now, the people in the high limit area are the people that are addicted to winning. That's the difference. If you want to make, if you want to win and you want to fucking have some good shit, you're going to play the high dollar. You see people buying $50 scratch offs. You see people paying $100 scratch offs, $25. Then you got the people paying the $1 scratch offs, $2 scratch offs. Those are for the people who are addicted to money because they think if I spend this $2, I'm going to win a million. You're going to win a free ticket. You're paying two dollars. You're gonna you win just a free brought ticket. something really good. Good. You know how the Arizona lottery has those scratch offs. When yeah. they first come off with the new ones, those ones pay off, right? Oh they yeah. They get you addicted. They get you baby. They, oh, they yep. get you to pay ten dollars, twenty dollars on a two dollar uh, thing. Oh, five hundred dollars on two bucks. Next thing you know, you spent. All your five hundred dollars that you earned, or you gain, that you you want, yep, and yep. then more. A guy told I used to work with a guy a long time ago. He said he did a scratch off, won a hundred bucks, bought a hundred dollars worth of scratch offs, didn't win a single fucking thing. <laughs> He had a hundred dollars and he spent it all on because he said, I just knew in that lot. He says, I just bought like all these different ones while I was there, didn't win a single fucking thing. I was like, nothing's is not even a ticket. I was like, you had a bad run. <laughs> <laughs> like hell yeah and i see that shit in casino all the time people on losing streaks in casinos they lose they'll be up you know two three thousand they don't win again for weeks they'll be they're like man i was up three g's man they just in a hole putting their whole check in there they go back they borrow money from other people they just taking out payday lenses they going straight downhill and it's like sometimes you just get on a bad run i lived in vegas for 15 years I've seen people come to Vegas, you know, living life, nice house, kids in school. And I've seen those motherfuckers leave to go all the way back home, live in the basement with their family. Somebody's basement. Vegas will take you down like that. You've been on bad runs sometimes. You just get on a bad run. It just motherfuckers think losing a hundred is a lot. Try losing 10, 15,000 in like two months. 10, 15 G's in a couple of months. You just straight Got down. Got five here. bands in one night. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And I tell what because I'm like, and I want no people, I ain't going yeah. back no more. <laughs> you know, and, I, and I tell my fuckers, people who knew me back in the day when I used to sports bet and everything else, I went like 4600 bucks. Go home. I went like 2800 Me and my man Nate was out one night. He won 1300 I went 1300 Monte Carlo. We must have gambled for like an hour total. Both of us 1300 up. We went out and bought leather suits like fucking B. Diddy and shit. I, <laughs> seriously, I had a brown one. He had a gray one. We went out and bought leather motherfucking suits like P. Diddy. We was up in the club with our <laughs> money and shit. We was all in fucking Vegas. I still remember that shit from back in the day. Exactly. <laughs> Motherfuckers like, we went straight to the suit shop. And my man Chill, he had one of the suits. So we said, dude, let's get these leather suits. 
We looked like P. Diddy and fucking Mace. We had leather suits. Fuck it, we just bought with the money from Monte Carlo, partying like a motherfucker <laughs> all night. We up in that motherfucker like this, boy. It was like, that's my man, Nate Rogers. He in Vegas right now still. He'll probably remember that story. He's like, dude, we hit those motherfuckers. I said, we just couldn't go to the casino with jeans on and shorts. No, we left with the money, went, bought leather suits, went right back to the fucking club. We was in that motherfucker like, yeah, dude, I was eating fucking chicken wings. And <laughs> <laughs> that's Vegas for you, man. That's the shit Vegas will do to you. Motherfucker had you in a fucking buy a leather suit for no reason. It was like, dude, I love this suit. Fuck that. But we did it, man. We was doing it back in the day, doing it. But I've also said I went to Green Valley Ranch within a matter of hours. I kept hitting the ATM. I lost $3,000 in a matter of hours. It's happened to me before, too. And I'm like, I'm $3,000. And, and when you lose $3,000 in a matter of hours, because I'm doing big bets. I'm betting 150, 200 each roll. You know, I'm throwing, you know, 100 on each hard way. So it's $400 out there with 100 on the line. And it's like, you know, you just rolling, hoping you hit a, if I hit a hard eight, that 100 turned into a thousand like that fast. So I'm good. I'm like, I'm shit just, I'm, excuse me, I'm seven and out. I'm losing money left and right. A few hours later, I just go sit in the parking lot and I'm like, I'm the dumbest motherfucker. I'm a casino accountant. I'm the dumbest motherfucker on planet right now. What did I just do? I just gave up three thousand fucking dollars. What did I just? There's no hurt out of you that can take that hurt out of you. Yeah, I mean, really? you can't even turn the steering wheel. You just sit in the car. You can't even turn the steering wheel. The key is too heavy. You can't even turn the fucking key in the car. It's too heavy. And you just like, That's I'm the weird. dumbest motherfucker I've ever met. I just don't believe I just gave away three thousand dollars. And gave it no away. they said at the craps table and let me do it. They just watch me do it. Then they say, Hey, man, you ain't gonna win, man. Just quit, dog. Just quit. I'm just money, money, cash in, fuck another 500, cash in, another thousand, cash in, another 500. I'm just putting cash on the table. And they like, this motherfucker just ain't going to win. He ain't, he really think he's going to make his money back. I'm like, well, I'm only down a thousand. Okay. I'm only down 1400 now. All right. I'm only down like 1800 now. Right, take that one row. <laughs> yeah. And I'm thinking all I got to do is hit like one of these hard eights or something. Put 200 on a hard eight. If I hit that, I'll make two G's. I'm back. Just I'm I'm on the field. I'm on the numbers at the top. I'm just seven out. Shit, something's wrong, man. I just can't get it. I can't get it. You sit in the car and you like, I ain't get the fuck up out of Vegas. I did that shit in what 2000 and well, my son was born in 2002. I did that like in about 2004. By 2012, I was like, I'm out of here. I'm getting the fuck up out. I just knew Vegas wasn't for me, so I just busted my ass, saved my money up, did everything I could do for like the next ten years. And got the fuck up out of Vegas. <laughs> so I'm done. That's what we gotta do with the apps here. We gotta get the fuck out of these apps. From yeah, these yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Man, you, you gotta know, it, you gotta do what you gotta do. Presence is everything. You have your cards. You go hang out at some of these hotels. You know, <laughs> shit. Yeah. I be up in there for their breakfast. Oh yeah! Just watching. If I see you with a half in your hand, skirt. Hey, yep, how you doing? Yep, yep. Exactly. Man. Be the right. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, a you still about a suitcase up front? Be like, I don't know how much they charging you, but where are you going? Because I could probably. Where are you going? Here. Facts yeah. for real. Presence is everything. That's it, and, and, right there. And if you got more, if you got gear, you walk up and they know you're a driver and you a four hire driver. This and that. Be like, hey, I don't know how much they charge you, but wherever you going, I bet I could beat that deal. What are we talking? I'm right here. That's my but the thing about right it there. is, you know, we professional drivers, like you said, so I already know what they charging you. Exactly. You are, are you going to the airport right now? Oh, they charge you like seventy dollars. Yeah, it, it, you you just paid. So, yeah, you just paid about forty for that. Yeah. yeah. Reservation? Shit. <laughs> oh yeah, you just paid a hundred for that. Oh, don't even. I I'm so pissed off right now because the other day I'm in Tempe, and I'm I'm down by the Westin. And I, I got a surge on my phone, like a $5 surge, something like that on my phone. Like, I got to use this surge before I go home. I get an airport ride for 11 bucks. So I'm like, okay, they give me $6 to go to the fucking airport. And I'm going to use the 5 to make it 11 Fine, whatever. So I get the ride, take it to the airport, drop the motherfucker off, open it up. The dude pay like $25. Jesus they, they were gonna give me. They were going to give me $6 for something that dude paid $25 for if I didn't have that surge on my phone, man. And then I end up getting 11 out of the 25. I'm like, these raggedy bastards, they it had to be like a, a reservation or something. It had to be something on there for him to pay that much and for me not to get paid shit. 
I was like, no, nah, man, this can't be 70% of the fair. There is no 70% of the fair nowhere in shit that I'm seeing all the time. Can't be. Ever, ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. That's like, just, oh, it, it, surge is getting worse everywhere. <laughs> I'm Oh, I gave up Surge the other night. I was so mad because they kept they kept messing with me. I had to hurry a tub and the Surge off because they kept trying to do nature hikes. I'm sitting on like a five, six dollar Surge. I'm getting a million fucking. I'm like, nobody's doing nature hikes no more. And I love it because maybe the apps will change their, their pay for us on long rides. But I'm getting like back to back, far north, yeah. past, past the one-on-one north, past the one-on-one, Glendale, Peoria. And I'm sitting in Tempe. I'm like, I'm not driving to Peoria at this time of night because I'm not getting a ride back. Fuck no. And nobody's mm-hmm. taking nature hikes. I had rides going to Maricopa, $32 to go to Maricopa. And I'm like, that's a 30 mile ride. And there's no, it's almost an hour ride down there. I'm not coming, yeah. I'm not getting a ride back. So I'm gonna have to come back home. So basically, I'm getting paid $16 each way to drive two hours, $16 an hour to drive. So I'm like, no, I'm cool. I'm cool. That they're not paying us. Some comfort, was it? Yeah, they're not paying us right, man. They're not paying us. My grandma said, don't be no $2 hoe. Well, you know, the, the, this is the one thing that I don't understand what don't the apps did. I don't yeah. understand what the apps did. But supposedly comfort was one step lower than black, correct? Yeah. Yep, right? supposed to be. Supposed to be, but it isn't. You know what it is? But they still it's charging a, it, the it, consumer the lux price, but they're not paying the driver what they was paying them. Here no, you go. And, and you they're giving, giving the driver just the same thing as an extra ride. It's just nothing. It's just like the $7. I've never seen a $7 comfort ride from Tempe to the airport. That is yep. ludicrous. Yep. And they get me all the time. Let me extra comfort going from Tempe to Scottsdale, six bucks. I'm like, what? I'm like, that's regular. <laughs> and they charging a the person probably like $17, $20 for the no, ride. You'd be surprised that it's $30 probably. Damn. And then, you, and the if, reason if, why I don't I don't do you, pickups in Tempe that often, I'll get surge in Tempe and try to take it somewhere else real quick if they let me out of there because it's always four people. It's always kids trying to save money. So they're all paying each other. And so the, the kids are like each charging each other $5 for the ride or whatever. And then I end up getting maybe five, six dollars out of the ride if I don't have surge. So I'm sitting there thinking, well, I'm getting screwed because everybody else is making money on me and I'm doing the driving in my nice ass car. So if yeah. I ain't got surge, I'm not driving. I'm out of here. I'll get that surge and I'll rush out of there so I don't get four people in my car. Hey, man, take this person for $8. I'm like, I'm not doing an $8 ride. I'm not. Not with four people. That means I'm getting three dollars for four people, and I got my five dollar surge attached. I'm not doing. There's too many asses on my leather. Yeah. You know yeah. what's amazing <laughs> when you do that and you reject it? That's let's, say you reje- <laughs> let's say you reject. Let's say you. Too many asses on my leather. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> let's, like say, let's, say you right let's say you reject that. Let's say you reject that, and, and there's a surge on it. Then the next ride that you get, there's no surge. They take it away from us. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you're and you're stuck right there. It's like there's nothing you can do. You you sit there and you argue. You can fight with them, and they'll sit. Oh man, you know what? You know the way this is set up is like no, because you're charging these people leaving this event over here in Tempe. I know what you're charging these people. Why am I not getting paid? What you're charging these people? What's going on? That seventy percent don't really exist. Y'all fucking with people. We know that now. Because a young boy yeah. even said that. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> Too many asses in my love. My leather. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. For ride share. That's too many asses on my leather. There's too many asses on my leather. Y'all not going to be scuffing up my seats and shit. And wait, wait a minute. Not only asses, but backpacks. Uh, asses and backpacks on top of it. Hell yeah. Asses and backpacks, man. Can't fuck with it. Can't fuck with it. Woo. Summer swamp ass and leather. Oh, man. It's been a hit. Hey, my man Nick, though, my man Nick, he just, you know, he's got regular cloth seats in his car. So he cleaned his car up and he went and he got some, uh, some like leathery seat covers. We just put them on his car the other day. Nice, nice. He's got to send me a picture. I told him, send me a picture of it. So we put leathery seat cover because I said, this shit's easy to wipe down, especially in summer. You got motherfuckers sweating and shit. You want to wipe your seats down like every two or three rides, wipe your seats down good. But when you got cloth seats, that sweat gets soaked up. It's like a wash rag. It's, sw- it soaks that fucking soaks sweat. It up. And Car just smelling like ass, ass. Man, riding around this motherfucker smelling like Planet Fitness. 
booty. Hell, you might just put a big ass Planet Fitness sign on your car. Bubba, this smells like a gym in this motherfucker. Right well, you got to spray this shit down with that ammonia concoction I be making. Spray everything down. Let that shit seep into the car. Seep into everything. That ammonia kills all that bacteria that causes odors. Then your car smells like you just did laundry. People say that shit all the time. Your car smells like a laundry room. I'm like, yeah. See, that's why I be about on a five ride minimum on these apps today. I can't have all them bodies in my car. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Five by shit. And each ride got to pay 80, 90. Because I'm only and doing You five. damn right. I only you damn right. I, I, I picked up uh, some people that, uh, what was last week? Someday last week. It was about three of them. So the lady, she just opens up the front door. And I'm looking at her. She looking at me. We looking at each other. <laughs> she had the look said it out. She was like, "Oh, can I get in the front seat?" I said, "You should have asked that before you sat on my seat, ma'am." Exactly. <laughs> front seat. Like, right? Seriously, she was like, "Oh, I said front seats for uh, private pays only." Oh yeah, mm. oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna start that <laughs> shit because especially when motherfuckers got four people, I'm gonna tell them front seat yeah. is is actually a, a ten fifteen dollar charge for front seat. What do you mean? Yeah. That's my own. That's my independent contractor fee. I mean, yeah. if, if Uber and Lyft going to charge you for charging, hey, man, I want to add a stop. They're going to charge you like 24, 25 for adding a stop. I charge for sitting in that passenger seat. You can sit in the back. Anybody can sit yeah. in the back. But if you need yeah, somebody I to I'd be doing the food. That's, that's mm -hmm. a $10, $15 seat. Oh, man, we only got to go here. I don't give a fuck where you got to go. It's a $10, $15 seat. <laughs> That's the yeah, and you know they're here in Texas is hot. Yeah. So yeah. in the summertime, <laughs> if they get in the car, I ask them, I say, do you want the tipping option or the non-tipping option? Hell yeah. Like, huh? <laughs> okay. You want the tip rocks or the non-tip rocks? Yeah. Well, what's yeah. the tip rocks and you get to ride in AC? Hell yeah. Tipping or not. The non-tip rocks and we ride with the windows down. <laughs> 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 exactly. like, you worried about your rates? I was like, rates don't pay my bills, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shit, man. Dollars yeah. do. And, that, and, that's and I had this one day. lady, she was like, well, I'll take the non-tipper option. She thought I was bullshitting with her. So we rolled with the windows there. We got to be. <laughs> we was coming at the airport. <laughs> we got about right outside the airport. She was just like, can we turn the AC on? I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. You said non-tipper option. We ride there. She was going. <laughs> she was going all the way to fucking Plano, which was about a 30 minute. Let's ride. Right. Right. Hey, you learn that day. Yeah, you gonna learn the day. <laughs> you gonna learn the day. No, we once you make your mind up, it's made. Once you say yeah. 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 that's gonna determine how you can ride from this camp. Hey, and I'm one of those, I'm one of those people that I think if you're an independent contractor, Lyft and Uber should tell us right off the bat how many people are coming to your car. Oh, the fact that's that they hundred percent the right, they don't give us a ride count. They don't give us a ride because if they told me you were pulling up to four, I'd be like, there's an automatic. And they, they should say, hey, for Jeff, there's an automatic $15 upcharge if you got four because you're going to use this front seat. Would you still want to use Jeff? Yeah, we'll take Jeff in the Beamer. Cool. So Jeff gets an extra $15 on this ride. Yeah, cool. see, Jeff, once you get that third row, you can tell the ass to get on back there on that third row. You still ain't getting in my front seat. Third, third row, each seat in the third row is, is $5 each. So if two people need to go back there, that's extra 10 bucks I'm going to need. Front row is 15. You can't sit in my front unless you got $15 cash in my hand before we move this motherfucker. I need 15. Well, man, if we all can't fit in the back, then y'all, you motherfuckers need to call an Excel. So I don't know what to tell you. Call an Excel. Because if you sit in my front of my Beamer, shit, I need 15 up front. This is a this is a three passenger car. You motherfuckers got to all sit in the back. But it's four of us. Fuck it. 15. 15. <laughs> man, exactly. I like that $10 per person minimum. And that's the thing. We're giving these people like a private ride in a private vehicle that we clean, that we got to do a lot. Of, and these motherfuckers is paying an average of like $2 a person, $1.50 a person, $1.25 a person. Even the cab driver charges an extra for per person. Like 3 to $4 or something weird like that. I saw yeah. it on the side of a cab. Yeah, I saw that shit. I saw that. And it's like, if if you if the app was telling me, hey, man, you're, you're going to pick up, you know, four people. I wouldn't know right off the bat what I got to do. When I drive up and I see four, I've canceled before because I'm like, I got a Jeff, small car. This is a three series, not a seven series. Jeff, at the Biltmore, this is the honest to God's truth. I went to pick up a customer, right? And it was supposed to be one. His friend came in and says, can I catch a ride with you guys? I, and I looked at him. <laughs> and I looked at him. I looked at him and I said, 
Uh, no, if you want to, your 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 other Uber is coming right. With, yeah, yeah, but I I can go with him right now. I said I tell you what, I'm canceling this. Um, you know me with my cancellation. Hell yeah, but she, he's cancel. quick with it. I oh, cancel. I said, no, yeah. I'm canceling. I got the 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 baggage out of the back of the car and I put it on the side and I drove off. Yeah, it's like, like that. Like imagine going to a motherfucking restaurant and you see somebody in front of you ordering. Motherfucker, like, yeah, man, I'm gonna get uh, the number two. I'm gonna get this and that. And then it's your turn to order. So, hey, just put my order on theirs. They'll look at you like, what? Yeah, get your own Uber, motherfucker. You can't just be like arbitrary. Hey, but can we just all ride with you instead? No, all you motherfuckers mm -hmm. need your own Uber at this price. Y'all all need to get your own Uber. I'm a, it's, an, it's an eleven dollar ride, <laughs> and and the rider, the rider that was in it, said, it's okay. He can come in. I said no, it's not okay because I'm not making double the fare. So exactly. I gotta get you out so you two can catch the next Uber. The next yeah. dumbass Shit. is gonna take tell a motherfucker, hey man, hey, yeah. save money. Yeah, I wait on his Uber because I'm out of here scared. Yeah, exactly. Shit. <laughs> right. Hey, just just throw my chicken in the same basket as his, and, and it can save some money, right? Now, nah, motherfucker, no matter what, you got to pay for your own meal. You can't just jump on somebody else's shit and say I want to save money. Throw my throw my fucking hamburger on the grill while you doing his and flipping both at the same time. This is a, you know, yeah. You're not doing double work. Nerdy motherfucker. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Nerdy I got a motherfucker. whole lot of rules. Like I car, car strollers and shit like that. Yeah, I pulled up. I got a ride. Pull up. They looking. You looking at me. I'm looking at you. We looking at each other. Yeah. You done pulled this baby stroller out and you got a car seat and groceries. I look. We look. I stirp, cancel that. Yeah, Next exactly. Week. Next one, you're not getting my, you're not muddying up the back of my car. And you're not getting all that dust and stuff in the back of my car. Period. Bottom line, point blank. Yeah, that's why when I look at these terms of service or whatever, I'm like, these are employment terms. These are not independent contractor terms. They're telling us what to do in their industry when we are the fucking industry. They never asked us, hey, man, how much do, should we charge you guys for this? Hey, how much should we do? Hey, how much should we work these out? Should we tell you guys how many riders are coming? These people don't even drive. I highly doubt these apps would even hire a fucking driver because imagine a driver going to work for Lyft at, or Uber at their corporation. Oh, they'd be busting a whole game wide open on these motherfuckers. They'd be like, oh, man, this is what they're really doing for real. They hiring people, probably all signing NDAs and shit like that, saying you're going to be sued if you give away our intellectual property. You can't tell nobody how we're doing this behind the scenes or we're going to come back and sue you for everything. That's why mm -hmm. you never hear no former employees or not. You can't tell me everybody who's worked at Uber and everybody who's worked at Lyft still work there from day one. These motherfuckers oh, no. are something different. They don't have YouTube channels. They don't talk on fucking TikTok. They don't talk on Instagram. They all sign NDAs. You never yeah. hear from former employees of these apps. They got NDAs about intellectual property right now. They, they all do. know. If they if they told the truth, if any of these former people came out and became a whistleblower or told the fucking truth, they probably signed away all their whistleblower rights. They signed away all the other shit. You can never run a YouTube channel saying what we do at Uber headquarters. Okay, you can never sign. You don't see no formal DoorDash people, no formal Uber. None of these motherfuckers got channels. They'd have a gazillion goddamn subs if they did. But <laughs> nobody does it because we'd all want to know. We'd all want to yeah. fucking know. Yeah. So I want to know. Like, Tell me yeah. some. So we we go there and we'd be like, hold the fuck up. So this is a former employee telling all the secrets about what goes on behind the scenes. Uber knows this shit. All these apps know this. So they say, you motherfuckers got to sign documents saying when you leave this motherfucker, what the, the, the knowledge you got about this place stays in this place. You don't start a channel talking about it. These motherfuckers have been companies been around since 2013. There's not a single former employee channel of any of these apps nowhere. There's a reason for that shit. There's a reason for it because they know they're doing some illicit shit. They know that. And so they keep it all under wraps. So they can keep that that little, like I said, like, like timeshare. So they can keep that fucking whole racket going. They got to keep the racket. racket. It's a racket. Yeah. It's like you said, it's a racket. Yeah. And if you, I, I looked up the definition of racketeering and I put that shit online the other day because we got to take business law. When we do accounting, we take business law because when you're an accountant and you're doing financial statements, you got to go by gap policies, you know, the U.S. accounting standard boards, FASB shit. You got to study racketeering. You got to know what it looks like. You got to know what embezzlement looks like, how to track embezzlement. You got audit you have to deal with racketeering is there's laws against that shit and when it happens and you see it you notice it because there's a lot of fraud involved in racketeering there's mm -hmm. a lot of political people involved in racketeering 
when mm -hmm. Tony West and all these guys are now at these corporations that are committing fraud and getting sued for fraud and losing settlements left and right all the fucking time. You can't tell me these companies are on the up and up. I don't see no other companies being sued at this level, losing this much money nonstop. Pfizer was racketeering. Look at all the lawsuits Pfizer fucking lost. Somehow they get involved with the Democratic fucking administration. Somehow they get involved with Fauci and all these fucking people. Look at Pfizer's history of fucking settlements. They're the most sued pharmaceutical company in the history of goddamn planet Earth. And now they're involved in human lives to where they dictate what we do. So you got people running the racket dictating our lives. It's kind of like Uber shit. The people running the racket dictating how we do business. You never asked us how to do business. You know how they to settle all these things? It's on the back of all us drivers. 75%. Yes. That goes towards that fucking payoff that they're giving out in New York out there. Yep. 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 And that, they're paying I said a that a long that. time ago. What they do in New York, they had to pay all that money out in New York. What if they do? They go cut the rates and what they're paying the drivers in other markets like Dallas and the larger markets. Mm -hmm. And here, and what they should do, and what Uber you know, should do to minimize their their lawsuits, especially from passengers and riders, they just say for every driver that puts a camera in your car, you get an extra fifteen dollars per trip because you're saving us on fucking legal fees. Every trip you take, you get an extra $15 if you run that fucking camera. We'll give you, we don't give a fuck how long or how short it is. We'll give you an extra $15. If it's a two mile trip, run the camera, you get $15 add to this trip just because you're running the fucking camera. They could save so much because every driver out there will be like, I'm putting the camera in my shit. The only reason why I don't, because it ain't no, you just invading on my privacy now. You don't give a shit about me. You pay me $15, I'll turn that motherfucker on. But you ain't paying me nothing to do work for you. You want me to do all your, you know, do your traffic logs and click thumbs and shit of traffic's there? I don't click none of that shit. Let them figure it out. Say, I don't work for y'all like that. Is there an accident still there? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I just look at that shit. I'm like, I ain't fucking clicking that shit. <laughs> you know what's amazing that people don't realize here in Phoenix? We have 5 million people that live in this, in the Phoenix metro area. And yep, out of yep. that, I don't know what the percentage is of uh, Uber drivers that we have and or Lyft drivers or couple any thousand. good worker, but it's got to be huge. A yeah. couple of thousand. Yes. Easily. It's, it's got to be huge. And you I, know mean, I mean, because when I touch down there, I touch down and I was down there for what? A couple of, you know, just that short amount of time. I touched down on 100 drivers to pull over onto the fair share app. Just in those couple of days that I was there, so there's thousands down there, Man, and that's that's, crazy. that's you know, and that's five million people we have here. So oh, yeah. these drivers need to understand that when April first comes along, we all need to unite and we need to bond together. Yep, and we need and to all meet like in in different television stations and different uh, uh different radio stations and and then from there go in caravan to the city hall and let them all know what we're doing that way we mean business, we mean business. that's right and a lot of drivers what they don't realize is that you know arizona is a is a zero tolerance state which means there's no legal limit for drinking here you can have two beers and, and the cops will be like, oh, we're going to give you a DUI. Even though you're not drunk, they could do that shit. That's, it's, they have the right to do that. So right. drivers, we all we got to do is set up shop around bars, pubs, shit like that. We're already there. They And we let the bars and pubs know, hey, we're a bunch of four-hour drivers. This is what we do. Tell your people, you know, when they walk out, they ain't got to sit and wait for no Uber for 40, 50 fucking minutes. We're all sitting outside. This is what we do. And we do every bar and pub in the city like that. And we flood. Instead of everybody sitting at the fucking airport, go Presence sit at pubs everything. and bars. Go sit Presence at pubs and bars. everything. Because you ain't going to have no luggage when you leave a bar or pub. Usually it's like a couple or like one guy or, you know, a girl just hanging out with her friends. I mean, they're going to give you $20, 30 They usually live in the same neighborhood because most pubs are like locals. They live in their neighborhood. You ain't going to go more than like four or five miles. You don't get $25, $30 on that. Instead of app paying you $8 and mm -hmm. you sit at the airport for hours on end, we could be sitting at a bar just plucking bar people all fucking day. There's so many ways that There's we can so make money. Ways. I mean, on the weekends, I be at the strip club. What's up? Hell yeah. Shit. You know it. Hey, they got Jaguars <laughs> right, right up to 17 and, and McDowell, man, that's true. It'd be lines of people out there because nobody wants to go over there because it's a bad area. Me, I'm a bad motherfucker. 
Look at oh, my okay. wallet. Okay. Get my that wallet. Part. I'm like Samuel Jackson. Look at my wallet. That mother's a bad motherfucker on it. <laughs> that part. <laughs> so I go like, you're not scared. Oh, scared of what? No, I'm not at which all. Period. Mom said, Which one is your wallet? Is the one that say bad motherfucker on it? <laughs> <laughs> he says, Yeah, just give me my wallet. You can take out which one is your wallet. Mom say bad motherfucker on it. <laughs> that, that one right there. Yeah, exactly. Period. Uh, so, period. Man, that's what we do, man. We go to those areas. And we pick people up, mom, because and strippers, shit, they'll slide you 20, 30 cash because they just made oh, all that yeah. money tonight any fucking ways. Yeah. And he's sitting there like, and usually the, my boy Mike, he actually works at Highlighter. Highlighter is one of the strip clubs out here, but his family has been running Highlighter for years. So if I just, I could just text Mike or whatever, either our IG or I could just text him on the phone and be like, hey, man, I'm going to be up near Highlighter. If anybody needs a ride, let me know. He'll be like, actually, I got two girls need to ride back to Tempe. Cool. I go up there, they'll slide me 50 fucking bucks. They don't even pay that out. Just give me 50 bucks. Just, they throw all they like the bags and shit they got, all their glittery shit. They throw all that shit in the trunk. I drive straight to Tempe, drop them off. I'm back on back on the apps again. <laughs> it's like shit's easy. But if I'm not by highlighter, it's a long route. I don't like going up on seven. I'm like, man, that's way up there. But you got highlighter, bourbon street, you got all those little strip clubs in that area right there. And as long as you know the people at the door and people like that, the girls take care of the bouncers. Bouncers take care of you. It's a network. Bounce be like, hey, don't call Uber, don't call Lyft. Yeah, because they're trying to charge me 32 to get home. They're charging me 47 to get home. My boy will do it. It's 50 bucks. That's it. Cool. Gotcha. That's it. I'm going to go yeah. slide up in there and go catch me a meal. Me a, off, steak meal. Yeah, a couple of miles. Drop the second one off. You're good to go. You're out of there. It. Easy. Easy. But we got to start doing that. We got to start doing that. You know, educating drivers on how to be better independent contractors. Get off these slave ass plantation apps. You know, on April the 1st on a protest, a lot of drivers are going to want to capitalize on that, which is cool. I get it. I get it. A lot of people are still W-2. So yeah, they're, pigeons. they're they're so short sighted in what things are going. When when we were building casinos back in the day, I remember when we had to renovate Polo Towers and I was with Stephen Klubeck. Stephen Klubeck was the CEO of, of Polo Towers at the time that he him and his dad, Sheldon and his brother, Richard, they all own Polo Towers, Diamond Resorts. You can see them on undercover bosses and shit like that on TV. When me, him, and my boss, Kathy, we all went down to Polo Towers, he took a sledgehammer and he hit the fucking counter of the bar, shattered the whole bar. And he says, instead of replacing the bar, I want to build all this out for offices now. But he had to at least damage some to the point of where the replacement cost was too much to replace. So he hit this <laughs> fucking marble bar with a hammer. The dude is a fucking genius, man. He's a genius. <laughs> He's in there like He's, He's a, crazy. He's bad. Wow. <laughs> fucking whole marble shattered. He says, now when we renovate it, I want to make all these offices. And that's how our offices ended up on a Las Vegas strip overlooking the Cosmopolitan, Aria, and everything else. People say, how did you guys end up getting off of Valley View and ended up way down on the strip with all your offices? Me, Steven, and Kathy went to the office one day. <laughs> we went to the bar. <laughs> the bar. It was a huge bar that overlooked the whole fucking city. That became our corporate offices. So now we overlooked the whole fucking city while we was working every fucking day. Cool as shit. Steven was cool as a motherfucker. He was like that. The dude... But that's who we grew up around. People who knew how to make shit happen. It's like, if you want something to get done, you got to, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some fucking effort. It's not going to be overnight. So he was one yeah. of those guys that was willing to build shit from the ground and go up. A lot of these drivers, they want some instant, like right now, today. I want it today. I want it today. Like, no, no, but this is a process. You got to go through the process, man. Got to go through the process. Yup. Yup. Side hustle is illegal. 80 mil will be affected. What? What? Adolphus says the new law side hustles illegal. 80 million will be affected. <clears throat> I wonder what that means. Side hustles. 80 million will be affected. I'm going to tell you something about side hustles. And they want to call what we do a side hustle. But what we do is for hire. For hire. We're not a side for hire. We're not. A, you see people. Oh, this is my side hustle. We're for hire. We're not side hustlers. It's a taxi cab. A uh, 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 side hustle. It's cutting grass a side hustle if you own a landscaping company. Okay. They've been owning landscaping companies. They got fucking, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of equipment. You think that's a side hustle if you got 50, 60 G's worth of equipment sitting on your fucking trailer? No, that's not a side hustle. Some people really, you can't call everything a side hustle just because somebody else labeled uh, W-2 a main thing. It, it's super, Maybe your, your W-2 is a side hustle. It, it's Super <laughs> Shuttle. Remember Super Shuttle? Was that a side hustle? What? You remember Super Shuttle? Was well, that a I, side hustle? 
I don't remember that. I was, it was probably before my time out oh, here. Oh, no. They, they were blue bands that picked up people all the way from Mesa to to uh, to the airport or from from Gilbert to the airport, whatever it was. They just filled up the van and then they drove into uh and in, into this uh into the airport. Was and, that a uh, side hustle? That was never a side hustle. Exactly, exactly. And so what it is is corporate America is seeing that the average people like us are having minor investments and making major profits. They don't like that shit. So they want to call it a side hustle. It's major if you dump two million in and now you want to get a return on your money. <clears throat> but it's a side hustle if you only go out and buy one car. And I'm like, do that doesn't yourself. make sense. We're small business. Small business is small business. It's not side hustle. We it's have business, business. With the small business association. There's a reason for the SBA. There's a reason they call it a small business loan. You ain't got no such thing as a SHA. There is no small hustle loan, small hustle association. You've never heard of that shit. They want to make that up, though, because if they can indoctrinate you to make you think a small business is equals hustle, they can fuck with you. Make they ass take you to fucking court on that because it's a whole bunch of business out there that are small businesses. I mean, people make cakes, cookies, pies, fucking, you know, tacos. These are all small businesses that eventually grow into bigger businesses. So well, you can't just say a hustle is not a business. I'm telling you, you're looking at a woman that used to set up photo booths at nightclubs and after hours all throughout the city, making over 3,500 a night slanging photos. Damn. It's business. Hey, I remember That's back in the day, we sit in front of the motherfucking wicker chairs. You got the big ferns hanging over your back. You got the fucking city world. You hear me? Las Listen. Vegas, motherfucker, everybody. You got groups of motherfuckers behind you and shit. Hey, that was money back in the day. It's money. Remember, remember the people that used to shine shoes at the airport? Yeah. Was that a side hustle? Exactly. Exactly. They, some of these guys were millionaires. Oh, yeah. And just like Kim says, Kim, they making people slaves. This is feudalism. Look up feudalism. Feudalism is about serfdom. It's about landlords and serfs. A serf is somebody who works for you to because they have no equity. Serfs have no equity. Just like when they say you'll you'll rent everything or you'll own nothing and be happy. That's how they want to make this world. Serfs yes. will own nothing and be happy. Serfs never owned anything. Serfs were not landlords. Serfs live on people's land. So a serf would have to farm, do anything that the landlord told him to do in order to acquire, you know, residence on that property. He could have his family on that property. He could do whatever. But he was a serf. Serfdom is was a step up from slavery. Serfdom, indentured servants, all of that was just a step up from slavery. But it's all fucking slavery is what it is. It's slavery with a caveat. So slavery is where you take away the humanity of somebody. Serfdom and indentured servants where you actually give the person a level of humanity. You actually consider them a person. A slave, you don't even consider them a person. They're a tool. Like they look at us as tools. If you die in a car, a car crash, you die, somebody carjack you, Uber and Lyft should be like, oh my God, his fucking family. Oh, they don't. They just send another fucking driver out. They don't, you know, we're going to bury him. We're going to give him insurance. We're going to take care of the family. We're going to do this. You're a tool. You're a slave to these fucking people. You can get shot in the head doing a goddamn a pickup. They don't give a shit. You're a slave. And, and that's what they did back in slavery. Shit happening on the plantation. All right, get somebody else to fucking carry it. That's it. That, that, and that's how Uber and Lyft are doing now. Yep, it's all slavery, man. All slavery. Plantation economics, man. 100 on that shit, Melly Mel. 100, man. But I'm I'm glad people are waking up to what's really going on and nobody's scared to call it what it is, because for so many years we've been the fact that, you know, black people, white people, Mexicans, Chinese, we can all sit around and have these discussions using words and nobody censor. Oh, you can't say slave or else I'm going to get offended. Fuck that. We're going to say what we're going to say. We're going to call it what it is. They want to push offense on everybody. Or oh, if this person offends you, they're not your friend. Some friends will offend you. They'll tell you, man, I'm pants. They ain't a real friend if they don't. There you go. Your friend gonna offend you. The people who are not your friends are gonna worry about your feelings and sugarcoat shit. I'm gonna tell you, man, them pants look stupid as a motherfucker. You don't want to wear them today. I like these pants. Nah, nah, you don't want them. Trust me. (laughs) Nut huggers. (laughs) Your friends gonna offend you. And that's like, but they want to indoctrinate you to make you think, well, if somebody offends you, they don't, doesn't Trump offend you? You shouldn't vote for him because he's offensive, man. Fuck you, man. I got money because of that dude. I ain't worried about what he said about me. I'm grown. I could take it. People talk shit about me my whole life. I'm hard to offend. Very hard to offend. 
So you can say what you want to say about me. But when you start fucking with my money, now we got a problem. Now we got problems. Now yeah. I got to figure out a way to get you back. Yeah, you can say, you can say, oh, man, you you can say, yo, BMW's a piece of shit. That's cool. I'm going to make me some money. That motherfucker, too, that's cool. I'm going to make some money. You shouldn't drive that car. That motherfucker, you don't offend me because I'm still going to make my money. Now, if you stop, now when you take away the Lux platform, now I'm fucking pissed off because I bought that car for a reason. Now I'm pissed now. So say what you want to say. Like, them other, that's not a luxury car, Jeff. It's not Lux on our platform. It don't have to be Lux on your platform. I just canceled a fucking ride and I'll just charge this motherfucker a Lux rate. You don't got to call it a Lux. I call it a Lux. I don't care. You don't offend me by calling my car basic. You don't offend me. I offend you when I call it a Lux and I get paid. That offends you. And they don't like that it shit. It offends you when I snatch your passenger from up off your platform. Now you're offended. Exactly. Money, when it comes to money, that's when motherfuckers want to move. And that's why I told everybody, when you start doing cash rides, when you start promoting the value of a driver, you promote communication between rider and driver. That's what these apps are scared of. They don't give a fuck what we say. We ain't got to say. The protests are making them shook up. We've been talking shit about these apps for how long? We've been talking about these raggedy motherfuckers for how long? They ain't cared about nothing. The moment that protest dropped, we selling stock. We fucking up the numbers with a glitch. We're going to buy some stock back. We're going to uh, put out a prog a broadcast saying, you know, we didn't value drivers like we should have valued ah, them. What a joke. That, that <laughs> was a whole joke. That protest fucked them up. They didn't know yeah. what was coming. It, it, we, we've been talking it, shit about them forever. They ain't never said shit like that, ever. And all of a sudden, they like, oh, we need a backpedal. These motherfuckers, is, drivers are waking up. They're talking to riders. Riders are giving our money to the drivers directly now. They're using Venmo and Cash App and Zelle now. They fucking with our money now. And yeah. Square. Yep. Because, like, we don't got to... Offending you is offending you. It's people in the... Like I said, I work corporate. In corporate, we get cussed out in boardrooms all the time. We make major fuck-ups, major plays. We get cussed out every day in boardrooms. Cussing in corporate America is nothing. You went on cuss in front of customers, but when you're in a boardroom... <laughs> they be like, who the fuck didn't do... And now, your ass should be checking that shit, Sarah. What the fuck were you thinking? You get cussed out in boardrooms all day, every day. So if you don't got thick skin, you can't work corporate. You got a lot of soft motherfuckers. You ain't gonna make it in corporate if you soft. But you might be packing your box up today with your motherfucking goldfish walking out the front door. You done. You too <laughs> so I come from that background. I come from a cutthroat background. We got to fire fucking 1,300 people. You need to pick 1,300. Like, motherfucker, people just bought houses and cars and had kids and shit. Well, get a 1,300 you don't mind cutting. I don't know what to fucking tell you, but talk to you next month. <laughs> it's like, damn, like that, like that. That shit's yeah. cutthroat. Motherfuckers fire you on emails. Hey, anybody getting this email? Don't show up tomorrow. The fuck you mean? Is this spam? No, motherfucker, you don't got a job here no more. It's Real funny because I saw somebody, somebody with the YouTube music group, YouTube music group laid off a bunch of people in this city, right? So, and it was a video about it. The shit was funny as hell. So YouTube music group laid off all the people in this city, all of just, just one location. So the people were asking after YouTube said, okay, today's you guys' last day. You know, you guys don't work for us no more. You're done. Motherfucker, one lady was like, so is it okay if we leave now? Motherfuckers laughing in the comments was cracking. They do. If they just fucking fired you, why are you asking if you can leave? You don't have a job there no more. These ain't even your bosses no more. This is how people think, though. If a motherfucker tell me today is your last day, I'm like, all right, I'm out of here then. What you do, fire me? You just did, motherfucker. You just fired me. What am I worried about? I'll walk up out this bitch and go give me some ice cream. Hey man, today, uh, today's the last day we're gonna be open, you guys. You know, so make sure you guys wrap up. Uh, make sure Jeff, make sure those files are in, motherfucker. You ain't talking to me. I'm already my keys are in my hand. I'm walking out the door. No, these motherfuckers. Yeah. That lady was like, and was, was it, is okay if we leave out. early? And, yeah. and, and showing them the little bird out and saying, yeah, goodbye. exactly, but, motherfucker. Like, is it okay if we leave early? Like, <laughs> They just fucking fired you. They ain't even your boss no more. <laughs> what you, but this is how people think. And we got these same people in ride share now, man. They got fired from W2s and they left W2s and now they're in ride share. They have it hasn't clicked over. They're still talking about strikes and stuff like that because they still got that that mentality that they're an employee. It's like, dude, when you're a contractor, you're in a whole new vernacular. You use different terminology, you use different spirit with how you do shit, but how you make money. You're not W2 no more. But it's hard for people to shake that when they've had a job since they were 16. Now they're 32. Now they're an independent contractor in ride share working under the Uber and Lyft umbrella. They still think they're, well, Uber, you know, they hired me. No, they didn't hire you. They activated you. It's different. You're not hired. If they hired you, you'd be at their corporate office right now. You're activated. They'll, they'll let your ass go today for some shit that happened six years ago. You don't even fucking know it. 
like you will find out if you're a next ride. <laughs> it's like you're you're an independent contractor. You know, so it's I, funny. It's funny you say that because there's customers that have sat in my car and I had to uh, straighten them out when they said, "Oh, how do you like working for Uber?" I don't work for Uber. Exactly. I'm I work for myself. Contractor. I have my own LLC. Here's my business card. Uh, uh, do you want to ride next time? You can call me. Oh, I like that. I didn't I know like that. It. Educate them, man. Educate them. Because we Uber, and that's the thing. Uber and Lyft sell us. They sell our services to them for a charge. We have to agree that this charge is good enough for us to take. Most of the times it's not. But this person probably thinks, well, it cost me $62 for this ride, so I'm paying you $62. No, you're not. You paid Uber $62 for this ride. I'm getting $19 out of this. What? Yeah. I would have charged you 50. This is my business life. I would have charged you 50 right here. Oh, shit. If we're for a hire, if we're independent contractors, then Uber and Lyft have to fight us for these fucking people. Everybody on this planet is not an Uber and Lyft customer. They have a choice. Do you want to do Uber and Lyft or do you want to use Jamil? You have a choice. You don't have to go, well, you have to stick with Uber because the terms of service says, well, the terms of service don't tell you to steal my fucking tips either. But you do it. So it's like you can't use terms of service against me, but you not abide by your own fucking corporate terms of services. Shit don't work like that. If you doing it some way, motherfucker, I'm going to take care of me. Fuck what we talking about. We're going to really make money because that's what you guys are doing. So we're going to do the same thing. And I think once they start seeing that's how we, the strength that we got and we're coming up to 300, we ain't a bunch of employees groveling. Is it OK if I leave? Well, we just fucking fired you. I mean, once we start seeing that we are strong, they're going to stop fucking with us, man. They're going to start saying, you know what? These mother going to take their money. They're going to take their money if we don't stop. We won't start paying them. They're losing it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Thanks for the tip. Next, I'll say something next time someone asks me. I'm telling you, Kim. Shh, man. We we got to, we that group, man. We that, And I tell people we're a very, you know, introspective group. We think a lot. We We don't just, a lot of people are robotic. They're NPCs. They don't think a lot. I'm very introspective. I think about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, the benefits and the cost of why I'm doing it. Because like I said, I could be doing anything. I, if I wanted to make a ton of fucking money, I got a garage full of fucking equipment. I would never run a YouTube channel. I made for six years. I ran my garage in St. Louis, a big ass three car garage for six years. I never had YouTube. I was using Facebook for free. Never had YouTube for six years. That's all I did was garage. I did engines, transmission. If I want to make money, I would just be in my garage all day. YouTube don't pay. They pay me 1900 bucks last month. This month I'll get like 1500. That's $30 a day, $40, $50 a day. If I'm only getting $50 a day on YouTube, but I can make almost a thousand dollars a day doing mechanic work. This can't be about money. Then YouTube can't be about money. It must be about us building a community, us educating people to be strong enough to go out there and fight for themselves. Done with the fuckery channels, done with the rhetoric channels. We're done with all that. Because if I didn't give a shit about nobody and none of this, only myself, I'd be in my driveway every day working. I wouldn't be worried about this shit. There's a lot of people out there. I ain't worried about no other fucking driver. I'm going to drive. I, I take care of my family. I'm going to drive. I ain't worried about no fucking protests. I ain't worried about this and that. I could be the same fucking way. I could be the same way as them. But where would we get as people if that's what the world was full of? Shit like that. We ain't going to get nowhere. So somebody's got to stop and say, you know what, Jeff? You okay right now. You okay. It's time for you to stand up for the people who can't stand up for themselves. The people who do, you know, they're probably not financially at this point where you are right now. The people who don't have it like all mentally together when it comes to business. Somebody has to stand up. So I created Literally. a stand up channel. And we got a lot of fucking people on this channel who are stand up people, not lay down people. Whole bunch of motherfuckers on this channel are straight stand up, willing to fight the apps every day. You know, willing to create yeah. apps. You, so you, I'm gonna you, I'm gonna you, share something with you all because see a lot of drivers don't take time to read into those service terms and conditions, right? Yeah. I'm somebody that reads into service terms, conditions, policies, and things like that. I'm corny like that because I like to know exactly what I can and what I cannot get away with. So let me share with you. As a driver of the platform, you acknowledge and agree that you are in a direct business relationship. And the relationship between the parties under this agreement is solely that of an independent contracting party. You and 
the platform expressingly agree that this is not an employment agreement and does not create an employment relationship between you and the platform. Amen. Right there. Yeah, heard it first. Right. This now, is in their service terms and agreement. But the problem is you drivers get on these platforms and you're just so ready for some money. You check off on the box and you don't even read what it is that you checking off on. I am time stamp this two and a half hour. I'm time stamp this shit. I'm gonna cut this motherfucker right here. I'm gonna cut this part out. 233. Perfect. Facts. That was now, the perfect statement. That's gonna be my next short. I'm dropping right there. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that's my next short right well, there. That, here again, like I said, she spit here, it. She spit it. Yes, she did. And let me tell you this. Here we have people that are look you you're an accountant by trade i'm a salesperson by trade i've owned six businesses within the last 25 years this is a business for me for for you the same thing in dallas right it's a business everybody needs to treat it as a business this is always has to be considered the customer you're always going to treat them nice because yeah. you got a good car a clean car you're cordial you take them from point a to point b what is it, what happened in between there it's a business you yep, talk yep. to people man and a lot of people like i said especially these the pigeons out there who think that uber gives a shit about them she just told you you're not their employee they have no investment in you you're completely right independent of them so, right and this is in there, sir. I, I mean, I have them printed out right here, you guys. Like, I mean, I'm not lying to you because it's my job to be in their business. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's my people, business to be in their business. And that's why I, I like that. The business minister. <laughs> it's, there you go, thing. business minister. <laughs> and a lot of people, they don't take the time. They just keep, you know, abiding by all these, these new addendums and these new upgrades and these new policies. They never read them. They never look at them. I understand them because I understand business. I know that these people don't want liability, so they can cut bait with us at any fucking minute. They will deactivate you right now while you sit here, and that's what we protested against. We understand that we're business investors. We're investing into a business that we want to have a relationship with these people. We're putting up big money to do it, and they're doing changes nilly willy, never sitting down and talk to us and under. And then we end up getting deactivated with all these bills we got to pay, with all these the directions we've set our in motion. We get deactivated off of a lie that somebody told to get a free fucking ride. And I'm like, you're messing with business now. This is not, you know, play toy level. This is hundreds of thousands of dollars level right now. You're not. And they don't. A lot of drivers don't get it. Why are you guys protesting? I'm making good. Money. Yeah, I got deactivated. But did you reach out and say that uh, in writing and say, I want arbitration? Exactly. Exactly. And I'm one of those people that, that believe that. If I was to get deactivated for, for no reason at all, as an independent contractor, I should have a right to know who got me deactivated and what they said so I can have communication with them. It shouldn't be a barrier between us to where their lot stands and I just got to fight for, you know, I don't even know what I'm swinging. I'm just swinging in the dark at some shit. I should have some form of defense against this person, whether or not it's like, hey, you know, y'all got my money trapped in the system. I got $400 sitting in y'all system. Y'all won't give me now because this person lied to me. And on top of that, I don't even know how to fight a lot because y'all not telling me what the fuck's going on, who the person is, who the per y'all not telling me nothing. Well, you know, this it's hard to prove a lie when a lie is not a truth that exists. It's easy to prove a truth. If somebody says, Hey man, Jeff, they said you got an orange BMW. I'm like, Yeah, I do, because it's true. But if somebody says, Hey man, this pastor said you got a blue BMW, what passenger? They said you didn't have the right car, you showed up in a blue BMW. I'm like, what passenger? Because maybe somebody who showed up in a blue BMW really got in the blue BMW and they think it was me because I got an orange one and I was in the same area. But it's like, what my passenger? All my passengers know my BMW is orange. Who was it? Oh, we can't tell you. It's hard for me to prove who that was. because Everybody knows my shit's orange. Who said it? That way I can say this person is lying. I showed up in an orange car. I always show up in a fucking orange car. I don't even have a blue one. But they do See, that but shit that's what happens ride. when you're giving 30,000 rides today. If you was like me and give about five rides today, somebody say some old dumb shit. You already know who said it because I already know who I had conflict with. Like that man that slammed my car door and I slid out the car on him and ran up on his ass. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you about to get him, get him. <laughs> and they deactivated my account. They did. And I was like, hold on, wait a minute. No, no, no. Because, yep, yep. You, you know, I have dash cam. And I can run that beautiful being footage and everything is recorded. You know, he's going to slash my tires. I said, sir, you don't know what side of town I'm from. Don't let my anointing fool you. Exactly. I'm still yeah. from the hood. Exactly. I'm still from the, I ain't in heaven yet, motherfucker. I'm still <laughs> able to repent. I can repent any day. <laughs> when, when I started, when I started uh, with Uber years back, I had a person say that the person that picked up the uh, picked the rider up was the, a different person, and I said, "How could that happen? I'm the only guy with a jeep at the time, driving a, a jeep and." A, Picking up people left and right, and they said, "Nope, it, you were you weren't the person." And I said, "Really? If you can show me the picture of the person that they said, here's me. This is me. Yeah, I mean, you, a guy with a exactly. goatee. Exactly. <laughs> How many guys with goatees are there, right? <laughs> yeah, like four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, bald with a goatee. Bald, that's God that's sake. some 2006 shit." Keep that because it keeps it, it keeps you fucking regular. It's like motherfucker, everybody else is different now. Like so, everybody got like fucking full fucking beards and shit. Uh, they activated me seven days later with an apology, and yet I didn't make any fucking money for seven days. And they and never some fucking big, asshole did that. I'd be like the opportunity cost. What it should be is that if somebody has a false claim against you, and Uber should tell us that they're past. If you have a false claim against a driver, you may be liable. For the fees they lose for the days we deactivate them while investigating your claim. And that will make a motherfucker think about and say, you know what? I was going to lie to try to get a free ride, you know, but I'm only saving 30. And they fuck around <laughs> and end up, uh, I get caught lying. They're going to charge me like $760. I'll just pay the $30 for the ride. Fuck the ride. I'll pay the 30 Because otherwise, <laughs> they be trying to get a free fucking ride. Man, I don't want to pay 30 bucks. I'm going to get a free ride. It's going to cost you 700 bucks Because this motherfucker, he makes, they're going to pay him like $100 a day for the next seven days. The money and low, job. wages yeah. low. Yep, and that's what they should Seriously. do. Tell their people, this is how we keep the apps true. Let contractors have us some skin in the game too. If we get deactivated, we get lied on. Let us either a have a way to to combat that, and don't take our money. If we've earned six hundred dollars just sitting on the app when somebody lies on us, send us a notice that says your money. You can you have up to seventy two hours to dub take the money off the app while we investigate a claim just put against you. But after seventy two hours. If the claim is true, then we're going to deactivate you. Cool. You give me 72 hours. Cool. Cool. So you can take your money off now or leave it on there. Who the fuck knows? But for them to instantly, you go there and you open your screen is deactivated. It's like, what the fuck you mean? What happened? You got to contact them. They're like, dude, why am I deactivated? What happened? Oh, yeah. Well, you got somebody told us that, you know, you weren't the right driver on the app. Or what? At least give me like if they say that, hit me up right then on the spot and say, hey, Jeff, send us a picture right now yourself. There. Okay, cool. Because the pastor said it wasn't you. We clearly see it. It is you. Yeah, exactly. It's me. We don't know that person. If I was to get deactivated, they should have to fucking be billed for every day I miss. And that's how you make the apps true. Give the contractor some skin in the game too. Because right now we ain't got shit. We ain't got shit. None. Was it? Yeah. Here we go. This is a good idea, Miss Kim's. Is good. Idea. Hey, I'm always trying to look out for drivers though, because the apps are never going to look out for drivers. That's not their their thing. Their deal is to make money off of us. We're tools. We're not human yet. We're just tools to them. Our families don't matter. Deactivating us when we just bought a brand new car two fucking days ago don't matter. We're not human to these people. We're slaves. We're tools. Anything you do doesn't matter. They will never have a, a panel of people where there's all drivers talking to all employees from Uber or Lyft. You will never see that. Sh I would love to be that person. Jeff, we're going to have a convention. We want all executives. We want actual real drivers, YouTubers, you know, drivers who got experience. We want all of them sitting at this conference. We're going to run it live, videotape it, no hose barred, straight on Rumble, YouTube, everywhere else. Cause Man, the out. Yeah. And we're going to run it. We're going to run it. You will never see that shit because they got way too much to hide. The Aldos, and, the Aldos have no empathy. They have no recognition no, of no. careness of human being. Exactly. The so algorithms I mean, just think are there to make money for these assholes at Uber and these idiots at Lyft. Yep. 
And there's so many drivers out there who were younger drivers. Like I remember when I was like in my early 20s, I wasn't making a lot of money. But rent, they don't, when you get charged rent, your apartment complex doesn't ask you how old you are to say, hey, since you're only 20, we're only going to charge you like 800. But well, we're going to charge somebody who's 30, 1800, because he should have more money by now. Rent's the same for everybody across the boards. And when you're in your 20s, you don't have that, that life savings. You don't got that business plan to where somebody who's probably 38 probably got it together a little bit better than you because you fresh out of college. You got, you know, a lot of entry level jobs and shit like that. But your rent is the same in this apartment complex as somebody who's been an executive before. It's been so you got to go through life, especially as an independent contractor, running your shit like you're an experienced business person, even if you don't have experience. Because they ain't going to say, well, since you're only 25, only 27, we're only going to charge you, you know, 900 in rent. But we're charging these motherfuckers 1800 because they're older and they should have more money. No, run your shit like a business. Always run it like a business. Run your life like you've already been doing this. Run it like you know how. Walk in with confidence. Like I remember when motherfuckers used to tell me all the time, Jeff, when we go over here, walk into this month, like we go do a deal with Marriott. We walk into the conference room. Jeff, walk into this conference room like we own Marriott. And we just do that shit. We only we're like Caesar's Palace. We ain't, we ain't Marriott. We're Caesar's Palace. When we walk walk in this motherfucker like we own Marriott. We walk in that motherfucker. We waving to people at the front desk. Hey, how you doing? What's up? What's up, man? All oh, nuts. Hey, man. Hey, I hope you're having a good day at work. You walk in that bitch like you've been working there. You don't know none of these motherfuckers. You talking to everybody when you walk in. Hey, what's good? Hey, what's up, my man? Hey, you having a great day? Having a good day? Okay. Hey, where's the conference room around here, man? Now, hey, bet no problem. Now, where's the restroom? You talk to motherfuckers like you own this bitch. You don't go, oh, excuse me, sir. Fuck that. Walk in like you've been doing this before. This could be the first time you've ever been in Marriott. They're going to think, hey, this motherfucker, he know everybody in this bitch, don't he? No, he just walk yeah. in like he owned it. That's all. <laughs> I learned that shit from corporate. <laughs> like, walk in this motherfucker like you own it. It's like, thank you, Miss Beauty with Essence. I love it. New member. Yeah, and, and, exactly. I am, Raj. When you rolling and you picking up people from airports, like when I talk to my people in my car, I don't talk to them like I'm a new driver. I talk to them like I've been knowing them for fucking five years. They get in, hey, what's up? Oh, nothing much, bro. What's you up to today? Oh, nothing. Hey, just getting off work. Yeah, man, I know. I bet your ass happy as a motherfucker, ain't it? Yeah, man, yeah. I'm talking to this motherfucker like we just sitting at the barbecue. We just riding, cracking up. Like, oh, man, I give him a card. Hey, man, call me if you need a ride. One. Oh, I bet, man, if you get stuck at work, bet, no problem. I just saw two motherfucking calls come from my phone. One dude said Lawrence Benz on it. So he's the guy who had a Benz in his driveway. I dropped him off a long time ago. And he's always trying to like hit me up for like car work and everything like that, picking up his son. But he just he just called me. I just saw the shit pop. And these are old passengers from a long time ago. Let's see this dude here. Yeah, this, this dude here, Lawrence Benz. Like he just hit me up. But these are all people who I've given my car to cruising. And I let them know, you know, I keep it 100 with you. I'm real. Oh, I can't give you a card. You got to go through Uber or go through Lyft in order to contact me if you oh, need it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, motherfucker, what you need? Aaron, here you go. Here's my card. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, hitting up these hotels, dropping your cards off to these front desk staff. You don't understand. They will reach out to you. Yeah. Especially when it, the one, the hotels that are near your airports, those are your target markets right there. Go drop your cards off because you have people that flights are getting canceled. They're international. They don't have uh, phones to where they can call yes. U.S. numbers. So they're reaching out to the hotels. And if your card is at that hotel desk, they're going to reach out to you. But you have to make your presence known. You have to. Yeah. And let your business be and let your business be like giveable. If you if you're dealing with a, a 25 year old kid, 20 some year old kid who's got issue with bills and shit like that at the front desk, slot, give them like five cards. Be like, hey, you know, but every time I come here and pick somebody up and you refer them, I'm going to slide you some cash. So these yeah. motherfuckers might make they might make an extra 50, 60, 70 dollars off of drivers. Yes, so every, alone. Every day, I mean, every day, seriously. This, this motherfucker, like, dude, I tell him don't call Uber or Lyft. I just give him, and when a driver come, the driver always cash at me some money back. And just, yeah, hey, Jeff, this is uh Natalie. I got uh Jonathan's at the front desk. He needs a ride to the airport. Cool, I'll be there in about 15 minutes. Perfect. I'll cash at Natalie 15 real quick. Here you go, Natalie. She could sit there all fucking day making money off of all me. All day long. And, like, and seriously. These, young ass, these young ass hotel people need to realize that, hey. Hey, anybody need a ride? Anybody need an Uber? Because I can set you up. Yeah, you know, motherfucker retirees and shit. I, I don't know how to use the Uber. I just downloaded the Uber. I don't know how to use the Uber, though. Don't worry about it. I got somebody coming. I got you. you. <laughs> I got you. And it's like, shit. And that's how yeah. we can we can help include these hotels and all these people get involved in us building our business. 
because once they find out that, hey, man, Jeff's always out at night. It's always people, you know, people with smaller cars or cars that don't look nice. His car matches the hotel. He's got a nice like Jeep or a nice Beamer, a nice disc coming up. That's all that matters. And when this person knows that, hey, I'm only 2024, 20, I'm not getting paid shit at this fucking hotel. But as long as I'm staying in contact with five, six drivers a day, each one of these drivers giving me like 30 bucks a day for me hooking up with rides. That's an extra $150 a day this motherfucker making at the front desk just dispatching us rides. So $150 Seriously. a day. You do that for five days. You just made $750 a week. $750 a week times two weeks is $1,500. You're making three Gs a fucking month standing at a front desk dispatching fucking rides to guys who just don't want to drive for the apps no more. You can do it. Motherfuckers can do it. It's got to believe they can do it. Say exactly five dollars finer feet. I like that. <laughs> five dollars finer feet, and then that you include works. that in five your fare that you tax in the passenger. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and that's the thing, man. It's I we got nice hotels around here too. Like we got the one at the top of the mountain in Tempe, we got the Westin okay. over in Tempe, all the hotels downtown, the Renaissance, Sheraton's, all of those. We got Arizona Grand down here. We got quite a few comfort ends out here. People love the comfort end because it's, it's right by the airport and they, they land, they go get some sleep and they go right back to the airport. Them rides, those are who you give your business cards to. Comfort ends because they're usually by airports. Drop off a stack of little cards at the comfort. Like, hey, you know what? I'm a ride your driver. I'm doing an independent thing. Hey, for every driver that actually hits me up, for every bride that hit me up, I'm going to slide you some cash because I'm probably going to charge you no 20, 30. I'll slide you 10. All right, bet, bet. I'll just cash app you. What's your cash app? Cool. And as soon as you start doing it, if they do that shit three, four times a day, $30, $40 a day, all you're doing is from comfort to hotel, comfort to hotel. You do four of those a day at 40 bucks. That's 160 bucks. You don't probably went like 16 miles. And you can easily just kick this person down. All right, man, I'm going to send you that, that quick for $10 a ride. Boom, just kicking them out. Instead of us giving the Uber app fucking more than 70% of the, what we're doing, we're giving this person, like Severa said, we're giving them the finder's fee. They found us a ride. We'll give them the finder's fee instead of giving Uber a $15 finder's fee, $70 finder's fee, $50. Man, fuck all that. We'll give them the finder's fee. And that's going to keep them hooking us up all the time. I'm trying to tell you. I know it works because when I used to take pictures at the clubs, I used to tell the strippers, hey, look, you bring them over here to the pitch booth and they ask you want to buy a drink. Tell them, no, you want a photo. Hell yeah. Slide that cat. And all the strippers running around the city trying to find a picture later. Hell yeah, and that's what it is, though. And, and it's everybody taking care of everybody. It's yes. people knowing that there's enough money on this planet to where nobody has to be greedy. We can share ideas, share insights, share money. There's trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars on this planet. We don't all have that much money. There's trillions of dollars on this planet. One and person ain't making it all. For a foul. Yeah, so, so what the it's fuck am I like? For a foul. Yeah. So if, if I'm sitting there saying, man, this driver, like what, uh, uh, Nick, he made thirty-seven hundred. Uh, Juan Vargas made four thousand. I made twenty-six hundred. We all happy with what we made. We're uh, the only people that are not happy are the motherfuckers on YouTube who want to be in first place all the time. Everybody can't be in first place every day. These motherfuckers got third grade picnic fucking syndrome. They want to win the sock hop every fucking day. I want to be first place in potato sack race. I'm gonna be first place in potato sack race. Fuck that. This is not a potato sack race. This is life. Everybody needs money for different shit in life. Maybe I don't need a lot this week. Maybe well, somebody does need a lot this week, so they don't have to make word a lot. Says the first day, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. So I say, keep me in the middle. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. Well, you know what's amazing? It's that Uber has placed this mentality to everybody that that drivers cannot be friends. Drivers yeah. need to compete against each other. Drivers have to keep the certain secrets to themselves so that they can't share that that power of knowledge they don't want you to be knowledgeable out there that's why you're here in this in the 300 because you yeah. want the knowledge to be given you exactly. get people to talk to them to make them make them aware of what where, where we're losing it in the competition chaos, yeah. competition is good it's yeah, because they want to create chaos. Because with yeah. chaos and diffusion, confusion, you don't get people able to work together. Everybody's so busy about fighting this, fighting that, fighting this, fighting that. And that's what they love when you, all the YouTube channels were all like competing with each other. Oh, come on. And I was on, I was one of the only YouTube channels out there, even when I first started saying, go watch the other shit. Please do. You can get off my channel. Go watch it. I was telling people that shit all the time. Go watch the other channels because I want people to see all the information. 
when you tell people not to watch something, you're withholding information. You try to hide something. Yeah, I'm like. I, I would want it's like when you go to court, you don't just let one side talk and not let the other side talk. No, let both sides talk and let me break down what I think the truth is. Let both sides talk. I say, go, go listen. You can go listen to that. Go watch that. I don't care. But a lot of YouTubers, even when I when I was like, you know, first starting, everybody said, oh, you ain't gonna make it nowhere because you cuss too much. They were always like, well, I wouldn't be watching no channel like that. I wouldn't watch a channel because I don't know. You shouldn't be watching shit like that. You shouldn't be watching channels like that. And everybody was like, but he's telling the truth, though. But it's just how he's saying it. Motherfucker, grow the fuck up. If, if my mouth offends you, you're not ready to walk outside. The world outside is way worse than my fucking mouth. Somebody will blow your brains out while you're sitting in your fucking front seat. My mouth won't do that. But you worried about my mouth, but not about these motherfuckers about to blow your brains out every fucking day on the street. You got bigger problems than my mouth. Trust me. Just, But that's how they were. And YouTube would, and the uh, Uber and Lyft would love that shit. Cause they love when drivers don't all get together. Can't all get. And when I started saying, everybody, just go watch other people's shit. Drivers started saying it wasn't a bad thing to sit on somebody's channel to go. Hey, I was on another channel watching today. People would get offended. Why are you watching a channel? Cause they made fucking videos. Why else would I watch it? It's like, and but yet, if you say I watch somebody else's video, they feel like you're cheating on them and shit. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, you, you you on their channel? What you watching a videos for? Cause I want to. Well, you could be watching mine. I, I am watching yours right now, but I was watching theirs earlier. But we'll just watch mine all the time. Man, fuck you. Get out of here. <laughs> it's like it's plantation so, economics. That's how they yeah. used to be back then in the slavery days. The ones out in the field, they they was yeah. they kept them separated from the ones in the house. It's, it's exactly. the same, same theory. And, right, right. And once you just open up the platform and say, everybody watch all videos of all rides here, get all knowledge and all information from all different views out there. We created April the 1st, I mean, February the 14th. That protest was all channels, all drivers across many, many platforms saying, this is what we're going to fucking do. The apps now see, they don't have a union, but these motherfuckers got each other, man. This is getting scary now. They're starting to talk about different things and sharing information on how they can take care of their families without using us, without letting us run them into the ground. They're learning how to take care of their families now. They don't want to do that because once we find out and once people find out that we can do life and do work outside of the apps like Tony West, Kamala's brother. Now people are saying Biden is trying to say, oh, we're going to create a new side hustle law. That's just Tony West talking. That's Tony West talking. Ain't nobody fucking worried about Tony West because that's the Biden White House. He's going to be out here any fucking ways. Ain't nobody worried about him. Trump's going to repeal every fucking thing that that even if it's against Americans, Trump's going to kick it out. So I ain't even worried about shit any fucking ways. All you got to do is be like, hey, man, he's trying to hold America's back. Guess what? We're repealing that law, that law, that law, putting America's back on deck. We're going to build the fucking wall. We're going to get America back on track again. Everything these jackasses did for the last four years is all going to be erased anyways. This is a blip in history. It is like Tony West and all the shit they're trying to pull, like I said, with that law they're trying to do. Nah, they're done. They're done. That law won't stand a chance because, like I said, everything's not a side hustle. This is business. This is business. Oh, Nick's in the hey, Nick's here. Hey, uh, well, hey, Nick, are you in the car, man? I'm gonna I'm try something real quick. I'm gonna I'm see if I can get Nick. If you're near the car, brother, you gotta do something. You gotta show people these seats, man. Because we, we put seats in his car yesterday. Because he's like, Well, I got these red seats in, man. We got these LEDs, these lights, and all this shit. So he said, Bring the car over. So he brought it over. We fucking hooked this motherfucker up. Dude, I'm like, ride. I'm like, I'm going to get these for my BMW. I got black seats, but I want those seats. <laughs> All right, bet. This is one minute. All right, bet, bet. Man, I want those seats in my car. I like these. And they're like got diamond stitch in there, nice and puffy and shit. I was like, man, these motherfuckers is bad. Yeah, Biden's a sellout. Yes. Oh, yeah. And like I said, and those seats, man, they're nice. They're nice. So I'm getting them. I'm, and the fact that we hooked his up and we know how to, you know, get them installed, how we I had to get the, the tools out, kind of get one of the seats out and everything like that. But we figured out how to get the motherfuckers in there. Man, I'm glad everybody was saying how, how they liked him, though, because that's what I really wanted to see. This is what is it? <laughs> what? Fucking Severus stupid. This motherfucker grow the fuck up. Put that on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that. Make sure this motherfucker grow the fuck up, please. <laughs> Put please on it, please. please. Please grow the fuck up. <laughs> That's funny shit. What up, Drew? My man, Drew. And Drew, he's one of those car guys too. 
So Gruden, he's down in Austin, but he was up in Detroit for a while. But he's one of those people who he can pass out his cards all the time. He does road side assists for drivers, shit like that. No, another one of those people who does good business, a young entrepreneur, always out there trying to make that dollar, knowing he can make more doing his roadside assistance and making more doing his mechanic work, but he's still doing ride share and delivery, just constantly building his business up in the background. And that's what it's going to be. Originally from Chicago, the one Chicago hustlers, man. Uh oh, Tom Wicker said, I just had a massive food order. I forgot a bag in my back seat. Oops, you better eat that shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> free hot dogs. Oh, wait, free. did they tip? Did they exactly. tip good? They tip. They didn't tip. Eat that motherfucker. Yeah, they that they was didn't eat that. Jack Thank you for box, the piano. Jack in the box. Yo, yeah, here's Nick. Nick's, Nick's about to show us his car right now. Yes, so, Nick, did you? I didn't look at my phone today yet. Did you send me a picture? Uh, it wouldn't send to your phone for whatever reason. But anyway, because I got a two hundred dollar phone. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, <laughs> I need to yeah, upgrade my phone. <laughs> let me flip the camera real quick. Hold up. My phone don't even make phone calls unless you put a quarter in the side of it. This is one of them weird ass phones. <laughs> I got an old ass phone. <laughs> let me let me get the LEDs on too. All right. What happened? You turn the phone around. No, no, too old. Is it? <laughs> Daytona's on that fucking Obama phone shit. He's a two hundred dollar Obama phone. They was calling your phone that shit earlier. <laughs> the wrong Obama phone, man. Jamil got that Obama phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesse, that's what's up, brother. That's what's up. Uh oh, I want to see what these things look like, man. Is he in Scottsdale? Yep, he's down in South Scottsdale. So he's got some pretty good traffic, man, because like I said, he shoots right up Scottsdale Road. He's right there in a the mix of everything. So I like that. Me, I'm I'm just too far south to be doing Scottsdale all the time because you know them people, man, it gets crazy. They be four deep all the fucking time. I'm like, I need to get this accurate, man. I got to get this MDX. He says, Jeff, come on, pimp our rides, man. We finna put curb fillers on these motherfuckers, everything. I want to have, <laughs> have mud flaps on cars, man. We finna do it all. I'm talking about screens dropping from the ceiling. <laughs> like, exactly. exactly. Hit that shit. Like my yeah. Uber video. Make sure you shake your driver's head. <laughs> it's like, what are you watching? Tip on your way out. <laughs> what the fuck you got me watching? It's my new drop down screen, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did you drive down screen? This is how uh, Uber is fucking us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> no, oh, what you flip get? the camera? Yeah, let's do it. I can't flip the camera, but oh, I'll well, just show it. it. Yeah, show it that way. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Look oh, at them seats. Geez. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me blow it up. Let, yeah, keep keep it there. Hold up. Woo! Nice. So Vera's laughing at your seats. No, I'm just kidding. She was laughing at something else. Look at that. That is nice, man. Them red it seats. It is nice. Damn. Yeah. Is that leather? Yes, yeah, like a it's like a leather uh composite. So it to me it's softer than leather. My leather is hard, like a brick. That leather is like cotton, man. It feels so fucking smooth. It's like cotton leather. My shit is like is hard brick leather to where you gotta like work it in order to make it softer. That shit is just naturally just like it's smooth, man. It's like baby powder shit. It's like damn, this motherfucker smooth. Then he got the LEDs in there. You put the LEDs on. Oh yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Hold up, I got it on the Let's red see. right now. <laughs> but you can scroll it too if you got some. You got some. Yeah, we got the lights up under there and everything. Okay. Yeah, I got yeah. So we back. we put the lights up under everything. The lights up under the dash. Lights up under the seat. Yeah, I, I gotta fix these. I gotta get these ones, but yeah. yeah well, they, there I got some zip ties in the garage, and I was thinking about that when you left. There's two cables up under your seats, and I Probably think sweet. if I can zip tie to those cables, next time you come over, I'm gonna go up under the seat and I'm gonna zip tie them to this long cable that was up under there. Because no, where we sat them, if you keep moving the seat back and forth, I bet it's gonna do something with those under the seat lights. Cool. Am I still on the main screen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> As I was, I was showing everybody the car, it's my man. Show now it's my show now. Hell yeah, it's the Nick show. <laughs> Slick Nick, yeah, man. That shit was, man. I like that, man. Yeah, them leather seats is woo. The motherfuckers is nice. 
And is I that and he, red? Only, you, I, he I, paid I red. Yeah, it's like a burgundy red. It's almost like the color of my wall back there. Honestly, oh, okay. it's like a burgundy red. And it's like they're not. What they're kind not, of car is it on? What was that? What kind of car do you have? Uh, just a Hyundai Elantra. Oh, okay. It's a black yeah, Elantra. No, I got a. No, I, I probably did fifteen rides after I got them on, and uh, once once it got dark out with the LEDs going and the seats, and I got a lot of good comments. You know, I, and without even saying anything, people just get in there like, "Oh shit!" Like these are crazy. Cause ain't no Elantra got red leather seats. I'm telling you, yeah. man. If I got a heat gun in the garage, like I showed him how I debashed my motorcycle, how I took all the Suzuki shit off. So what you do is you get a heat gun and you go back and forth slowly over all your emblems and you just pull them right off. And then you just like goo off the fucking sticky shit. Your car would look like a fucking black BMW if it didn't have them Hyundai fucking shits on it. I'm telling you, man. You wouldn't know. You could just roll up, motherfucker, be like, "What kind of car is this?" Just take the Hyundai off, take the Elantra off. Like, what kind of? Oh man, it's a, it's a new Jaguar, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new Jag. Oh, damn, this is a sick-ass Jag. It's a self-driving <laughs> car. It's a self-driving car. Exactly. It's custom-made. Really? It's custom. and, see, that, and that's why people ask me that about my motorcycle. When I go to the gas station, don't look kind of bike because I took all the fucking badges off my bike. They don't know what it is. So I fucking took all the Suzuki shit and everything off of it. They're like, dude, what kind of bike is this? This is sick. I'm like... Man, it's a bat bike. Batman gave me this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, that's just nice though, man. Yeah, Jeff, there was a huge influx in tips too. I mean, I there's there people giving seven, eight, nine dollar tips on you know fairly short rides, and all of those people were people who also complimented that all of these seats are cool. So it definitely made a difference too. Um, you know, and it creates good conversation for sure. So yeah, but I uh, like them, man. I think they they look better than my BMWs. My BMWs has got just lines that go across like this. Yeah, you got actual like diamond stitching. It's puffy. It's padded. Th they're real soft. Like I said, my seats are like hard leather. Yours are like I swear it's like rub it against fucking cotton, and that makes a difference. When somebody hand hits that shit, it's like man, this feels good, dude. This feels good. It's yeah. like that. And I would rather have those to protect my original BMW seats too. Does, yeah, that, those are nice. have, does that stuff have a memory foam on it? So that uh, they hey, doesn't the get numb? Show the seats again. Show the seats again. <laughs> yeah, this, this, like, the look the at passenger that. seat chair here is dope. I mean, it's just super clean, but but yeah. No, you it's guys have to get these. It's called uh, if you go if you go on Amazon, I don't think I, can you post links in the chat? You can post links in the chat. Um, <laughs> But it's just, hey, it's Jesse, we got to do yours like this, Jesse. Jesse got an Elantra, too. We could do his, man. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's cover, cover, cover auto, I think is what it's called. Yeah, is that what it's getting? Cover. So just cover, AO, ADO. Um, they're 170 bucks. And I mean, I think it's worth it. Totally worth it. So yeah. the next best thing was like 300 bucks. And I wasn't going to spend 300 on a seat cover. So. No, those are nice. <clears throat> Because I'll show y'all the, the seat covers I got in the back of mine. And when you see the seat cover I got in back in the mine cover, my shit look like it's made for fucking dogs. It don't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I got people sitting on my shit driving around. That's probably why I get no tips. My shit look like dog seat covers. Motherfucker be riding around like, dude, what the fuck? Is this a real Beamer? Like, did you get this Beamer off a of Wish? This ain't no real fucking Beamer. <laughs> or did my BMW off a of Wish? That motherfucker is no, BMW. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of BMW, my shit says BWM. I had no idea. <laughs> like, you got this motherfucker off a wish. I thought it said BMW. The whole night shit says BWM. You never look close. <laughs> I bought it, it off a wish. I was, wow, I was so cheap. <laughs> it came from China. Hell yeah, it came from China. Motherfucker, shit says made in Korea on the back. I thought it says M. No, M package. No, that shit didn't say M package. Yeah, it says let, made let, in let, Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Timu Beamer special. Y'all fucked up with that Timu shit. 17 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I got a beamer for fucking 17 cent off a of team movie. <laughs> oh my. Ask me how. <laughs> Shop like a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker got two, it got two big ass fucking D batteries. It's not even a car battery, just D batteries hooked up. My lights run off of this. <laughs> <I'm> like, motherfucker, <laughs> where'd you get this beamer from? T move. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This ain't a real famous is BWM. <laughs> it, it gets 65 miles to the gallon. <laughs> and you can do half water, half gas. It's a weird car. <laughs> this ain't a real BMW. 
<laughs> oh my God! The steering wheel comes See? off. <laughs> like what? Oh, the really? You just take your steering wheel in the house. That's all. <laughs> like smoking so out no They can't car feel it. They can't feel it that <laughs> exactly. way. Take your brake pedal off. You can take your brake pedals off so you don't got to have an alarm. <laughs> like what? <the> <laughs> Open the gate and ain't no brake pedal down there. Where your brake? Oh, brake pedal. Yeah. <laughs> can't start the car. I can't start the car. I let the brake pedal in the house. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> kind of BMW is this? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, That's man. No, but those seats are sick. Those seats are sick. I definitely, you know, I think I'm gonna look into getting those because I like the color. It's not a hard red. It's a real easy red. Like I said, it's almost the color of that wall back. It's a real easy red, and it just like. It, it ties in with the tail lights. Now, next time he brings it over, I told him we're going to take the wheels off, degrease all the brake calipers. We're going to race. We're going to paint the calipers red. So it's like race red, like the BMW calipers. So we're going to paint all the calipers red, get all that shit red, and get that shit looking sick. We're going to set that car up pretty nice. We're going to set it up. It's like, you're going to get a return on your investment, man. I'm telling you, dude, that motherfucker, them seats, shh, they, I knew this was going to turn heads. Because me yeah, having... Yeah, where, where's the TV... Where's the TV coming down so that it says how Uber is fucking us? So you can have a <laughs> that's, a that's a future investment. <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, no, it's totally worth it. I mean, if you think about it, you just got to break down the math. Like, am I going to get a return on my investment at the end of the day? And it's like, you can't like fully calculate that. But I mean, if I'm noticing a difference in tips already, you know, getting these higher tips, like, I, I Saturday nights, Uber's are already expensive, so I, I've noticed less tips on a lot of Saturday nights, at least oh, recently. Yeah. They're oh, already yeah. getting pretty expensive for people, so they're hesitant to tip. I mean, I took somebody, it was like a seven minute trip. It was like a couple miles, and I think it paid me 20 bucks. And this was like late last night, like around like 132 or something, something like that. And they gave me a ten dollar tip, you know, and they, they didn't, I mean, it's not like they, they didn't look like they had a bag. I mean, they just dropped them off at like some average apartment you know so it's like but they, they thought the the seats were sick you know so it's like who knows if that's what really made the difference you know they, they yeah didn't like the seats um so oh, it's I like so man you, you get you get 17 tips or what's to say 20 tips uh that are in flux to you know seven eight nine ten dollars because they thought the ride was so cool i mean there you go you just covered your you just covered it the cost of your seats investment. so and that's and what that, it is about it, return on investment man that's it return on fucking investment yeah. And cover, and you're protecting your original seats. That too. That's why I got to do with the Beamer, man. I got to protect those original fucking seats. Because like I said, those motherfuckers are expensive. Like three grand. I already looked up the back seats. Three grand just for the back seats. Three Gs. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. geez, that's a car. I could buy a whole other car for three Gs. He <laughs> 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 was like, dude, where's your back seats in this Beamer? I took them out. I went and bought a different car instead. Like, what, <laughs> where are we going to sit? <laughs> sit on the floor. Debbie <laughs> progress. Hell yeah, uh, I put some motherfucking lawn chair back there. Maybe back there in the lawn chairs riding around like <laughs> riding up in a with some plastic ass lawn chairs. Especially the old guys, right? When you make a turn, they all move. Your childhood back. memories on that one. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like this motherfucker got lawn chairs anchored to the floor in a beamer. I can't afford the back seats, man. They're three G's. <laughs> these are these are considered captain seats. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, fuck it. They, they can, I'm gonna have lawn chairs. I'm gonna have like beach towels and shit, a beach ball back there. Like, dude, what you trying to do? He's like, man, I can't afford the seat, so I'm gonna make this shit look like you at the beach. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna hitting the, hitting the beach ball back and forth while we riding the Uber and shit. <laughs> they get to like, no, what the fuck? Man? Say, hey, can't afford it, man. Seat covers. That's why you gotta get seat covers. But those are nice. Those are nice, man. You did good, Nick. You did good. I'm glad you got them. Now, knowing my luck, I'm going to try to get the same seats. I'm going to order that shit off of, like, Wish or fucking Timu with some weird shit and get some fuzzy-ass pink fucking seats. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm like, why these seats tickle my booty? Motherfucker, <laughs> 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 you ain't getting no tip. <laughs> you got these fucking seats off my team with these on my booty. <laughs> old ass fucking ladies and shit. You know, oh old, my God. old ladies say what they think right now. Hey, these seats tickle my booty. Where you get these from? Uh, you're like you're starting to talk Chinese again. And your eyes are starting to squint, man. No. 
<laughs> That's my Chinese yeah. translator from AI coming through. Fuck that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're turning yeah, Chinese on us. <laughs> uh, these seats are tickle my booty. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, booty comfort. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I would like a two booty comfort ride. <laughs> uh, I, I'll be gonna pick you up. I'll come pick you up. Uh, man, 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 that's just funny as hell. Uh, man, we'll be on the ship for three. Hours. Hey, y'all getting out to the 50 Cent concert tonight? 50 Cent uh, concerts maybe. tonight, man. 50 Cent concert. What's going to, what about 11, maybe? I think it's going to be letting out about 11 or 12. I got a 10 30 uh, um, private ride. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm about to run my ass in there. I'm gonna grab me something to eat real quick. Reheat me some fucking pizza. Jump my ass in the shower, man. <sighs> hey, but I appreciate you guys for sitting on this live stream with me, man, man. Nick, you came through with the seats. Appreciate that, man. Dims, you know, hey, at two hours and thirty three minutes, go hear what Dims had to say. I'm gonna copy that shit and make that a short. That was she dropped a bomb on you, motherfuckers. Mic drop, shit. Yeah. She read. She read the Bible to your ass. <laughs> <laughs> did, did oh, sure. I think a mother, right. I, as she read that shit, I heard a motherfucker in the background go, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where'd that come from? <laughs> she, finished, she said, you are not an employee. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and and again, I saw a motherfucker dancing. It. it was motherfucking behind me dancing. Like, clapping shit. Independent, <laughs> independent contract. Contract. Don't independent contract. Don't forget that. Yes. Amen. I'm gonna make a shirt saying that shit. I'm gonna, it's gonna, that's gonna say independent contractor. Can I get an amen? Jesus. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, gonna get the Holy Ghost. So you don't ride with the Holy Ghost today, lady. You finna roll with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that's what it is. The ride share Bible. She read that shit straight out. Corinthians 1.2. You are not <laughs> <that good>. Jesus. <laughs> According to code 5-924, it simply states. Hell yeah, Deuteronomy. And, and let's <laughs> remind all the, of the watchers at YouTube that April 1st is yeah. our next uh -huh. time. <laughs> so you can say Jesus. <laughs> hey, the way up there talking about saying Pedro in a priest outfit. We're gonna go. We gotta get Pedro and call him the ride share Jesus. <laughs> Pedro, aka the ride share Jesus. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. There we go. Hey, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that sound bite after she read her shit. She's gonna say, You are not an employee. And I'm gonna copy my voice saying, Jesus. <laughs> That's gonna be the whole short. <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus know. says independent contract. Man, That's gonna be the short of the year right there. Both of us going to church. Church. <laughs> She read the Bible to your asses. <laughs> I'm about to sanctify you. You are not a W2. Jesus, heal this woman. <laughs> heal, you bring out my anointing oil. Show profits and come back with 10%. <laughs> <laughs> she read the Bible to y'all motherfuckers. <laughs> live. This is live stream church. <laughs> Let's have a good night, sir. This is your Reverend Dims Dallas. <laughs> Coming at you, finna get the devil an Uber out your ass. <laughs> you gotta say the holy <laughs> water on your ass. <laughs> get Dara out of your system. Get David out of your system. <laughs> get and doing ten percent. Enjoy ten percent while you're at it. <laughs> you're now holier than thou. Send it to PO Box zero 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 one. Man. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, wow, man, y'all, wow. <laughs> we gonna do it though. April the first, Kim, she's she, she letting us know April the first. We gonna get out. We gonna do it. Shit. So I'll tell you, man. And I like what you said, Jamil. We need to like all get together in Phoenix. Phoenix drivers need to stand up because I'm seeing a lot of states. San Fran standing up. You know, Minnesota standing up. Everybody's standing up. 
Phoenix, we got a lot of drivers out here. We've got to stand up. We've got to stand up. And I think just coming together at some point, wherever it may be, and just showing the, the influx of how drivers do affect this city. Even if we all came together for 30 minutes, like say, hey, man, from 12 to 1230 this day, everybody just come together, 12 to 1230, and just show how many of us we, it really is. And, and, like, like, seriously. and off of 44th Street, ABC News, we can go all meet there, yeah, but have a license, you know, get a permit. We should, we got to get a permit for to demonstrate. Yeah. And then we do it all right, and we'll have the police there helping us, not fighting yep. us, helping us to direct traffic and yep. get everybody going into their parking lot. And before you know it, they're going to wonder, what the hell? They're coming to ABC right here on 44th Street? Yeah. They gonna say you're coming out the woodworks like the cockroaches when you turn the lights out. For real. That's right. It's motherfuckers. They gonna they all be you're gonna see them in the building setting their car alarms on our cars going chuck chuck. Make sure they ain't fucking with my shit. You're gonna be hearing all car alarms chirping. Chuck 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 chuck. Motherfuckers scared. They said shit. Honey, I might not be home for lunch today. These are some motherfuckers out in the parking lot. <laughs> Especially I'm not at going 12 o'clock. They, they all eat lunch at 12. 12 <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna, they gonna walk in that door and fucking you turn right back in that motherfucker. Like, dude, there's too many motherfuckers out there, dude. I'm cool on that shit. <laughs> man, man. Yeah. Hey, but I appreciate y'all for getting on live with me, man. I'm back. All I'm back. Right. Oh, yes, it's good to have you back. Oh, I'm glad your, your teeth is feeling good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot better. Because all they did right now, they, they did the build up on it and they, they put the post in the build up. They got the cavity out because, like I said, it was just a filling at first, but the filling came out and the cavity got exposed. To, so they had to go through to a root canal because it started like juice and shit would get in there. It would hurt like a motherfucker. Like, oh. But now yeah. uh, all the roots Those are gone. No toothache is gonna keep you down from being a three hundred. No, man, I was fighting back. I was, I was trying to do rides and everything, man. I do rides for a couple of hours. I go grab something like, and it was worse because if I ate like a granola bar and a piece of granola got caught in there, oh, God. it was a wrap, dude. I, I even had like this is left over from before. I had these little toothpick looking things like this. I used to use this. I'll be like, ow! I'm like trying to hear him get the piece out because it was killing. But once you get it out, it's like the additives and the sugars and shit would just burn the fuck out of that nurse. You got to hurry up and try to get it out because they're like a piece that broke off. And once it broke off, stuff easily got up in there. So I'll only try to eat on one side of my mouth. So I finally said, fuck it. Call the dentist. My crown will be in on the fifth. So I got to go in and get the actual crown put on. So it'll be a hole because I'm like, I don't want to pull the tooth. Just save it. I said, she said, I said, just root canal it. Well, it'll be a lot of people like to have an extraction. I'm like, no, nah, fuck that. That's cheap. It's easy. I just want to get the root canal. Just do the hard shit. That it was like I said, the process was cool. I did it. It was done. I was like, oh man, that, that shit was easy, but not too bad. I'll be back in a few days for the crown. So I started driving home. That Nova came started wearing off. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> man, I was sitting in bed. And I mean, my head was throbbing like you could feel the heartbeat from my mouth, my head. And I'm just sitting in the bed just like doing this, going like. <laughs> That's all I, I could do. They get a kill you. And I couldn't I couldn't lay down. If you laid down, it hurt worse. If I walked around, it, it just like it was I was dizzy because I was so tired. I just had to just keep shaking my head like this. Just keep shaking your head. Just keep it. I mean, for hours, dude, I sat on the end of the bed just for hours. Eventually, I fell asleep and I woke up and I was like, I feel a little better. <laughs> But it was like, I couldn't even fall asleep because it was hurting so bad. I was just like in and out. I was dazed. I was like, man, you can't drive. You can't do shit. You're just like, you can't walk. I just sit on the end of the bed just like, please stop hurting. Please stop hurting. Like, I'm back now. Hell yeah. I'm like, well, take man, your teeth out there, folks. If, if you're not going to win a goddamn dental appointment, just go in and say, just look, make sure it's no cavity. Because if, if the cavity eats away at too much of the tooth and you bite on something hard and a piece of that tooth falls off, all the nerves are exposed yeah. now, and that's where it fucks you up. When the nerves are exposed, it, it's all downhill from there. It's like, man, man. And I was like, got it done, got it done. All right, like, three all right, hours man. and twenty-two minutes. Hell Dude. yeah, man. Hey, yeah. And, and I'm, I'm gonna do that short. I'm gonna try to drop that short tomorrow. I'm gonna bring church for these motherfuckers tomorrow. They don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey man, y'all want to meet Jesus? 
<laughs> Introducing Dim Dallas, Reverend Dim uh, Dallas from Dallas. Say, like, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> he gonna drop that knowledge on the ass. They're gonna be like, so we're not employees. And ten percent. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like you are not an employee. Stop thinking like that, man. Stop thinking you work for these motherfuckers. You don't work for them. You are not an employee. So I'm gonna drop that shit. And that motherfucker better go viral because everybody needs to know that shit. Man. Yeah, that's in their own policies. That's in their own service terms and policies. You can't argue with what they wrote. Exactly. You don't work for them. It's like work you're just them. They'll deactivate your ass and kick to the curb in a fucking heartbeat. So get your money. Get your shit together. Use this app as, as building whatever you want to build, whether it's you're building yourself to go get another W-2, start another business, build a logistics business, figure it out. But on this app, this is not a career field. It's not a career field with them. You're not their employee. They're telling us that we're use the app as a as a, a way to make money, but don't don't let them use you. Exactly. Exactly. Because they don't want to have any benefits with us. They don't want to have no retirement, no medical, no, no, they don't want none of that shit with us. So every time they have to pay that for like New York or somebody like that or Seattle, it gets all fucked up because the government gets involved. Everything gets all fucked up. And next thing you know, it's like, that's why I'm like, we don't want the government. We just want our money. Don't, don't bring us no government. Just pay us what you owe us. That's it. Say like, y'all motherfuckers gouging everybody. Y'all taking too much money from us as drivers. Like even with the one that had the tolls on, everybody's paying tolls everywhere, and they ain't getting even paid for their fucking tolls. I'm like, these are lost rides, Dan. If you got to pay twenty dollars in tolls and the ride paid fourteen dollars, what the fuck, man? You're six dollars in the hole. <laughs> it's like this shit don't make no sense. But I don't know. All right, Kim. Good night, lady. Good night, lady. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, hey, Miss Dems. Hey, I'm gonna see y'all, Jamil, brother. Hopefully, if you're out tonight driving, I end up running into you out there, brother. I shit. hope to see you. 300, we bring it all. Oh, hell yeah, let's go. I'm gonna go outside and wash my car in here and run and take a shower real quick. <laughs> so, hey man, y'all be easy out there. Thank you guys in the chat for being on the live stream. Y'all know how we do it. March, we're gonna be having a lot of live streams in March because I'm back with a new tooth, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker want to talk to you. <laughs> Jesus. I got there, I got something to wait, wait, wait. I got something to say. I know, the tooth want to holler. Shit, that tooth's like, man, I've been quiet for a minute because the motherfucker granola been kicking my ass. <laughs> like, I'm back now. Shit. But go out there, hey. Get your teeth checked, y'all. Make sure you ain't got no cavities. Cavities are the worst. Shit. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'll holler at y'all later now. Good night. Good night. Hey, good night. Good night.